Hey everybody, I'll be on in just a second. I'm trying to fix the chat and uh, get Jimbo in his place. Jimbo. Jimbo. Hey. Yeah. Okay, well, we're trying to figure it out. We'll be on in just a second. Hey, I also forgot to ask, how is the sound, by the way? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Hello?
Okay, Jimbo doesn't want to lay down. Let's rock and roll, buddy. Oh, wait, we forgot to get that. Hey bud. Hey bud. Say hi. You're on camera. Jimbo. Say hello, you're on camera. You don't want to say hi? Okay. Maybe you just stare at the camera for a bit. There's my weird face. <laughs> There's cute Jimbo's face. Okay. Beyond just a sec. Oh, I'm sorry, that's scary. Go back to your spot. Wait, don't. There it is. Hello, I'm here. Hi, everybody. Sorry about that. Hello, everybody. One more vote for that. Okay. Sorry, I had to vote. I had to vote. Jimbo is having a stonk today, and he is just trying to figure it out. Just like, just like all of us, really. Just like all of us. Yes, right now, the premiere chat is up for some reason because... Uh, it's still premiering. I'm sorry. I, I, it'll fix once the premiere's over in a few minutes. Um, but sorry about that. Hello, everybody. Hi to the chat. I can see the chat down here. Hello, everybody. We're gonna have to, uh, refresh that in just a second also, by the way. Okay, so, let's get, uh, some housekeeping out of the way. Talk about what we're doing today. And then get crocheting, because we got kind of a lot of pattern today to make. Uh, I don't know if we're gonna make it in the three hour time limit. But, uh, so we might need to stretch it, but that's okay. That's kind of fun. Also, uh, Classic Lou needs to clean his glasses. Every time I start a live stream, I'm like, why can't I see anything? It's because Jimbo has pressed his dirty little nose all over my glasses. Um, <laughs> hi, everybody. Okay, so here is what we're doing today. I'm going to pause that. Today, we're going to be crocheting our new brand spot. Banking new pattern just came out today, literally hours before the live stream started, for Tuck the Tiny Giant Tortoise. This is my newest pattern for our Earth Day collaboration, and it is just so cute. I am super duper ultra proud of it. Um, check this out. Not only is it just like a really cute turtle with a bunch of like cute little things about it, but also it can tuck in and out of its shell. Oh my gosh. It's so cute. We're going to talk about this pattern quite a lot today, um, but I'm really, really proud of it. Pattern just came out. If you want to get to it, you can find it right here, clubcrochet.com slash tortoise. Um, the tutorial is all online, um, but if you want to get the PDF version of this pattern, this is a donate to download pattern, meaning that all the proceeds for any purchases of this PDF version of this pattern go to the World Wildlife Fund to help protect these animals in the wild. You can get this pattern by either going to the website right here, right, right there to download it, or you can go to um, down uh, donate on this video itself. So there's a little icon in the bottom corner where with two hands, like holding each other's hands like this. Uh, and if you donate there, let's see, is it there? Oh, it's not there for me for some reason. But if you donate on this video, you'll also get uh, um, the, a link to download this PDF. And all the funds will go to the World Wildlife Fund to help protect these animals in the wild. So it's really, really cool. I'm super duper proud of this pattern. Uh, it is 
a little tough. I'm not going to lie. It is like a, I, I would say this is somewhere between medium and hard difficulty. Um, so it is not the easiest pattern in the world, but it is extremely fun to crochet. And I'm just really, really proud of it. So that's what we're going to be making today. If you want to crochet along with me, here is what you're going to need. First off, you're going to need the yarn. Now we're going to be using all worsted weight yarn in 100% cotton today. Um, the colors that you're going to need are going to be brown for the top shell, beige for the bottom shell, and then a third color for the body. Now I am put, I just put a vote in the chat actually, so you can choose what color we want to make our tortoise today. We can do, uh, uh, going in order of the poll, we've got sage green, that's going to be this classic color, the same color that we made it regularly. Our mod green, this is going to be this kind of like, um, very, I don't know, uh, St. Patrick's -y green? I don't really know what, how else to describe it. Forest green, which is going to be this darker green, and then this teal green here. So you can vote on which color you want me to make my tortoise today, but regardless, you're going to need one green, a brown, and a beige. You'll need a crochet hook. I am using today a size 4 millimeter G, 4 millimeter crochet hook. It's my favorite kind of hook to use for worsted weight cotton yarn, which is also my favorite kind of yarn to use. You'll need a darning needle. I like using a crimped end darning needle like this. Helps you get in and out of hard to reach stitches. A pair of sizzies for, you know, cutting stuff. And a little bit of black thread. That's going to be for the mouth. This is just some spare black thread that I had over to the side. Um, and what else? Uh, oh yeah, safety eyes. Uh, you'll need six millimeter safety eyes. Uh, just two of them. If you want to get a bottle of eyes like this, they're available in the shop and a great way to support this channel. Speaking of which, if you like what's going on here and you'd like to support this channel, there's a few ways you can do so. The first easy way, like this video down below, subscribe to the channel. If you're not already liked and subscribed, I don't know how you found this video, but thank you for joining. You should like this down below. If this video gets, um, Let's see. I don't think we reached our our goal last week. Did we? Let's see. No, we did not reach our goal last week. So that means it goes down 50 to reach the goal again. So if this video gets 150 likes, we're going to do a giveaway next live stream, which is going on next week. So like this video down below. Try to get it to 150 likes. And if it does, we'll do a giveaway next live stream, which is kind of fun. Just kind of fun. Uh, hopefully this chat fixes up soon. I'll have to look at that in a second. Other ways you can help support this channel if you would like to. Um, you can support by getting a Club Crochet membership. That's probably the best way to support this channel. Members get early access to future patterns. They get access to the exclusive library of tutorials. There are a whole lot, over 300 of them. And I add new ones every single month. Uh, like this, uh, um our Simon the Sloth from one of our year's Earth Day collaborations. This is also available with the Club Crochet membership. So members are great. Memberships are a great way to support the channel. And uh, you can get a membership for only $5 a month. You can get a free trial to see if you want it. You can cancel at any time. It's a great way to support the channel. Other ways to support this channel. Um, you can support by tipping down below. But today, instead of tipping, I'd really rather you donate to the World Wildlife Fund. So just donate down below and we'll put a little thing out for you if you donate. Speaking of which, we already got a donation. Cooper, thank you so much for donating again. Thank you for helping. Sorry, the cat is rolling around on the ground being very cute, wanting attention. Uh, Cooper, you have been so supportive. I really, really, really appreciate it all of your support and I know that the World Wildlife Fund appreciates it as well. So to thank you for supporting, I'm going to put out some crocheted stuff for you on screen. Normally we put it in the background for you, but we're doing them on screen for this fundraiser. So Jimbo, stop. He's, he's scratching up my basket where I keep all my yarn and now he's got his head in a mo in the monomal. He's being very cute, but it's uh, very distracting. I would rather you go take a nap. Okay, well, he won't do that. So we're gonna put something on screen for you, Cooper, to say thank you. Um, today, I'm just gonna put out random stuff in the background, uh, whether they are endangered creatures or not. I'll try to make them all animals. Um, we're gonna start, Jimbo, stop scratching that. Gosh, we're gonna start with this flamingo burb pattern for you, Cooper. We're gonna put this on screen 
right here in the corner. And we're going to try to fill this out, maybe, as donations come in. Um, other ways to support... Uh, oh, Hamilton! Coming in hot with a $50! Heck yes! Thank you very much, Hamilton. I'm sorry I have not texted you back, by the way. It was a very... Right after the live stream, I just kind of like deep talks and just didn't... I forgot to text back. I'm sorry about that. We're going to add out this uh, black-footed ferret for you, Hamilton. Thank you for your support uh, for the World Wildlife Fund. I know they appreciate it as well. So we're going to put this guy out on screen. Now, keep voting for what uh, color you want me to crochet this with. Uh, as I talk about the last way you can help support this channel if you'd like to. The last way to support this channel um, is with, by purchasing our brand spanking new uh, da, 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 da. you can't see it let me see if i can get it on screen oh it's beautiful seasonal crochet kit these are our brand new seasonal crochet kits um they come with all the materials to make six different projects and an, uh and they come with a club crochet membership so you get access to a bunch of alternative projects that you can make with this kit even though this kit is not technically designed for them one of the alternative projects for this kit is actually this tortoise so this kit actually comes with all the materials to make this tortoise as well as five other projects so it's very very cool and a super good way to support this channel you can also get an annual pass to get four of these kits at 15 percent off and you get a very special bonus pin for signing up with an annual pass. You can learn more about this using the link in the description um, or by going to clubcrochet.com slash photosynthesis. Look at that cute little pin. Okay, I think that's enough shilling. What do you guys think? Yeah, I agree. Okay, thanks. Uh, <laughs> let's get hooking. Now we've got a quite a long pattern today. I don't know if I'm racing anybody, but I already know that I'm behind schedule by like quite a lot. So let's figure out what color you guys wanted me to crochet with. Forest green, oh, I'm so glad you voted on that. That's what I actually was hoping for because I don't have one yet in forest green and I really wanna make one. So that's very cool. So we're gonna be making a forest green tortoise today. This pattern was crazy to uh, design because low key, I'm like, way behind schedule on my patterns um so i've been kind of like stressing out because i'm like shoot how am i gonna finish all these patterns and then and then i was like oh no i gotta do i forgot i gotta do my earth day pattern and so like i just rushed to do this i was like okay let's do the pattern real quick what do i want to like what do i want to make i started this like mid-march probably and um and decided on probably the most complicated pattern that I've ever done for these World Wildlife Fund things. Sorry, there we go. Um, probably one of the most uh, complicated patterns that I've done for this. And sometimes, I don't know about you guys, but for me, when I am put under pressure to make something very, very quickly, for some reason, I like do what, what's up, bud? Jimbo's having a stonk. A little, little bit of a... Oh, he might be going in the spot. No, maybe not. We'll find out when he goes there. Um, for some reason, when I'm under pressure, especially creative pressure, I end up creating like really complicated things that don't need to be as complicated as they are, but that I'm super duper proud of. And this is no exception. I am so so proud of this pattern it is like one of the one of my uh favorite earth day patterns that i've come out with and uh i don't know i'm just really proud of it i really hope you guys enjoy it as much as i enjoyed making it because i really 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 enjoyed making this one can i do a salamander pattern heck yeah i definitely can do a salamander pattern maybe we'll save that for uh next year's Earth Day collaboration, uh, but yeah, I think that's a really fun idea. Um, I wanted to do an axolotl, which is basically, I think an axolotl is a salamander. So, the answer is yes. Yes, we will, I will uh, work on a salamander pattern for you. 
Now, by the way, in this video, we are not going to be going through the tutorial itself. Um, that I did a whole video tutorial for this pattern, so I'm not going to go through all the different stitches in this pattern. But if you um, have any questions as we're going uh, with this pattern, or really any any crochet questions at all, uh, please let me know and I will use this as an opportunity to help you out. Um, so yeah, if you get stuck at any point, uh, whether it's this pattern or any other pattern, uh, I'll do my best to help out. Twiz, ooh, I like that idea. Twiz asks, can I do something for Mental Health Awareness Month? Um, what month is Mental Health Awareness Month? This month? Oh, uh, probably not this month, to be honest. This month is kind of packed, but uh, I will definitely keep that in mind for for uh, next year and maybe later this year to do some uh, fundraisers for that. Uh, but yeah, if you actually, maybe we'll do like something where I think that would be fun to do. I want to do more of these fundraiser uh, live streams and patterns in general, but uh, it might be fun to do some of these fundraiser patterns for um, stuff that the community uh uh, wants me to do it for so like the World Wildlife Fund is is a charity that's really important to me because I really like um, because I I don't know I like animals and I think that we are kind of destroying our planet uh, I, I don't think that's much of a much of a question anymore and I think that we kind of need to protect it and protect our wildlife um, but there's a bunch of causes out there that we need to be need to be supporting and mental health is definitely one of them twiz so i totally feel that um yeah i will i will try to put something together for that thank you for the idea okay by the way i am on round four of these legs anybody else crocheting today what are you guys making if you are crocheting anybody making anything fun anybody else making a tortoise anybody making a sea turtle from last week's pattern what are we making in the chat let me know um and let's fix that chat in just a second too let's see is the premiere done there's still a few people watching the premiere which is kind of cool no the premiere is not done which is frustrating isn't it I tried to get the premiere done in time for this, but I did not. Okay, well, it's loading. Hopefully we can get the chat going, uh, but I'll, someone make sure to let me know if I am, uh, when, when the premiere is done so I can fix the chat. Oh, dude, another donation. Thank you so much. Anonymous, too. Don't want to be none, and that's all right. You can you can stay anonymous. But thank you for your donation. Let's add an animal today. Let's add... Let's add a hummingbird. Hummingbirds are cute. Not, not necessarily endangered, but another very cute animal. Um, there probably are some endangered hummingbirds. We get so many hummingbirds here. It's so cool. Very, very cool. Um, okay, we're gonna add that to the background there. Uh, oh shoot, I am in a race with some people. I didn't know. I didn't know I was racing people. Oh my gosh, I'm already so far behind. I'm definitely gonna lose this race, but that's okay. I am fine with that. I'm only a little upset. No, I'm just kidding. Now, last time I only, I lost, but I only kept up in general because I had made stuff before the live stream anyhow, so. It's no big deal. I know I will lose. I am in the middle of talking to people. I cannot crochet very fast. Oh, cool, Ellie. Yes, this, I have to say, this pattern is, uh, I do some weird stuff in it that I've never done before on a crochet pattern before that I'm really, really 
excited to utilize again in the future. Um, I would say, let's see, one, two, I would say there's three or four techniques that I use in this pattern that I've never used before in a pattern. Um, and it's very exciting. Oh, Jimbo is like barely in his bed. Um, uh, and I'll go through them in just a second. I'll, I'll show off all the ones that I did. Let me, let me go ahead and fix Jimbo's camera. How's that? Ah, uh, he's a little bit more in it. That works. Um, okay. So, wow, Amazefeed's already on round 10 of his first leg. Very quick, very quick. One, two. Oh, uh, yes, Taylor, this will be a video that can be rewatched. Um, all my live streams are that way. So you can always rewatch them and join them later. Uh, if you want to. Yes, AJ, I lost bad. Uh, congratulations again on winning. <laughs> Is the mystery pattern a little amigurumi watering can? No, it's not. But I'll tell you what, that would be very cool. Let's see, one, two, three, and then decrease. So something that I did in this pattern that I've never used before. Um, I don't really know what to call this technique, but I essentially, and I'm going to do it in just a second. Um, I essentially work like the stitches over stitches so that it makes like things like the leg and the neck curve. Um, oh, premiere just finished. Okay, cool. Let's see if we can't. Oh, now the chat's working. Isn't that great? Let's see if this chat works though. Okay, wait, hold on. Turn that chat box off. Oh yes, okay, good. We got the chat working. Thank you, Cooper. Thank you for letting me know. Julie, that's actually that's where I live, actually. Yeah, you still you still live in Thousand Oaks? That's really cool. Very interesting. Um, okay, so I'm gonna do my first new technique here. So essentially what I do now is I slip stitch into the back loop only of a round and then I work my round as normal. And then when I get to uh, back around to it in the next round, I work into that unused front loop only from the round before and it like adds a natural curve to your piece without doing decreasing and increasing. Um, I it's really cool. I I like it. I like it quite a lot. Um, it's kind of hard to explain, but I definitely foresee myself using this technique again in the future to make things like tentacles, maybe like a snake body, stuff like that. So like here, see how I'm working into that unused back loop only? Like that. That's gonna give us like kind of a natural curve to our piece, which is really cool. Oh, Julie, Callie misses you too. Yeah, it's a neat, it's a neat little trick. I don't know. Uh, I've never used that before. Um, I just thought while I was making this, I wonder if this will work. And then I did again, like under stress for some reason, I want to be innovative and that's really silly. I shouldn't be doing that. <laughs> I should be. I honestly, I should have made this pattern like more simple because I'm so under stress and coming out with so many patterns right now, but I just couldn't help myself from making something fancy. Um, another weird technique I used is I used these here. These are double crochet two together. They're essentially like super duper mini bobble stitches. Um, that's another technique that I've never used before. Uh, I was going to use the bean stitch in this pattern which is a technique, a stitch that um, Sir Pearl Gray made uh, for making little toe beans for his patterns. Uh, but once I did it, uh, I'll show you on the prototype where like the difference of the feet in a sec. Um, once I did it though, I it wasn't as much of a toe as I was really hoping because I really wanted the toes to help the, um, to help the tortoise stand up on its own actually. 
and so I used a different technique than the toe than the bean stitch back loop only inside or outside the back loop only is the one inside so if you look closely here at my stitches this so this would be under both loops right this is the front loop only this is the back loop only so I worked on the back loop only for the last round which left these front loop onlys on the outside. They're kind of hard to see if you're not used to crochet, but these are the stitches that we're working with. See, these are normal stitches, and these are the ones where the front loop only is showing. Yeah. They're kind of hard to get into. I found a few different ways you can get into them. You can either go straight up from the top like this to get into them, that's an easy way. Or you can go straight into the next stitch, like you normally, like, you know, like into the stitch itself, you go into the body and then turn your hook around and then like hook onto it. It's a little bit more difficult, but it's also easier. I don't know. It depends on how tightly you've crocheted your stitches, whether it's gonna be easy or difficult. Um, we have got quite a long pattern here, so I need to get booking. I need to get booking, booking and hooking. Oh, I just realized what I did. I forgot to drink coffee. <laughs> that's, that's going to be, that's going to be a problem. <laughs> Not going to lie. That's going to be a problem. We might need to take a break halfway through this so that I can, make myself a coffee. I'm like, why are my eyes so heavy? It's cause I'm addicted to caffeine and I haven't had it. All right, one of the legs done. I'm sorry that I'm so much more unprepared for today's live stream than I normally am. Look at that, that's a nice little leg. I, I anticipate using this leg for a lot of different stuff too. Like this is just like a very nice, Nice pattern for a leg. I like it. I like it. May's feet is already done with the second leg. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to lose pretty hardcore today. So there's definitely... I don't think we're going to do a prize for beating me in today's live stream because... Honestly, I don't think it's going to be that hard to beat me. <laughs> but we'll see. Maybe. Uh, maybe I'll change my mind. Maybe you can convince me to do giveaway. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Let's do six. No, five in the afternoon. Uh, yes, I did, AJ. I'm sorry, I haven't shipped out your um your prize just yet because i just got way too busy this week with this pattern and i just honestly lost track of lost track of it um but i it's on my to do i i won't i won't forget to ship it out this week i'm sorry i didn't ship it out sooner are you racing me today aj do we got a secondary race Yes, I am on Cali time, so it is not 5 p.m. for me. Um, but even if it was 5 p.m., I'd, I'd inject, a, inject a coffee into myself right now. No question. Uh, I don't know how many people know this about me, but I am a hardcore night owl. Big, 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 big time night owl. Uh, usually, I go to bed at like 4 or 5 a.m., I usually stay up really really late uh i don't know why i've always been this way ever since i was a kid i was i stayed up late um yeah i don't know i've just always been more active at night than i have in the day so take drinking a coffee at 5 a or 5 p.m for me is like drinking a coffee at the equivalent of like 11 for a normal person <laughs> because i wake up late and I go to bed really, really late, so. But hence why I need a coffee. I didn't go to bed till 4 a.m. last night. 
Me and Jimbo were cuddling on the couch, and I lost track of time, and I was crocheting a succulent. And I fell asleep on the couch crocheting a succulent with Jimbo on my lap. It was cute. It was good. Good times. Oh, thank you. Yes, I know, I know, I know. I've got a problem. It's a, I, I don't know, I don't know. I just, I stay up way too late. So if you're ever up really late, uh, and you want to just say hi, I'll probably be awake. Do I work nights? My pro Yes, I do. I work. That That's usually why I stay up late, is that I get all my work done at night. Um, so usually my work schedule is like, <laughs> I get up usually around like 10.30, I get up usually around 11, realistically, uh, and then I, you know, get ready for my day, I co I coffee, breakfast, shower, all that stuff, and I usually get to work around noon, and then I work till about 4 or 5 p.m. until Jules is off work. And then me and Jules hang out, we eat dinner, we watch TV, play some games, and then I get back to work around 10 p.m. Usually, 10 or 11, depends on what time Jules goes to bed. And then I work till like 3 a.m. That's usually my schedule though. I, I like to work really late at night there's something about working i don't know if anybody else is in the chat that is like also a night owl but there's something about working really really late at night that's just so much fun to me because like nobody in the world is awake so it's just i don't know something of there's something about it that's just really fun especially being in california knowing that like you know 4 a.m for me is like really really late for some people because i'm on pacific coast time so uh yes i got a strict boss <laughs> i am i am my own strict boss autism matters as uh where do i work i work for club crochet uh, this is my company and so yeah this is this is my whole job um in november of not it's been over a year and a half now i've been this has been my sole job um, before I was working for a company called top coder doing like I worked in their marketing division doing like motion graphics animation and videos and stuff but in November of what was that 2021 I think um, I was able to quit my job and do club crochet full-time thanks to all the support from everybody and if you like what's going on here and you want to help support and help me continue to keep doing this uh you should become a club crochet member it's a great way to help support that's the only reason i'm able to do what i am able to do uh is with the support of people like you so thank you to everybody that has supported and has a club crochet membership okay it's literally the only way i can do it <laughs> Yes, uh, Autism Matters. Email me at louis at clubcrochet.com and I'll, uh, I'll let you know where you can send stuff. I'm trying to get like a P.O. box or something so it's easier to ship things to me. You were... Th Wait, what? Ellie... I don't get it. Ellie says they were thinking of making metal blank... Metal blanks for Amigurumi. I don't get it, Ellie. What What do you mean by that? Okay, now I'm doing three. Oopsies, I messed that up. Yeah, I think what we'll do is once I finish the feet here, I'll go make a coffee. It'll be like a five minute intermission, not even. I'm very fast at making coffee. Because, you know, I'm addicted to it and stuff. Ready three, one, two, three, one, and two. Very nice. Body nice. I agree with that, Hill. 
Pilsimp? I think I'm saying your name right. Um, I totally agree with that though. I think one of the big benefits of uh, COVID, one of the big silver linings was that it totally changed the our perspective on work hours and when people should work or can work and stuff like that. So it's made my my work schedule a lot more, I think, understandable for other people. I've always been working like this, though. Uh, even when I worked for the company I worked for before I quit, I uh, it was a work from home job, and I was able to do my own hours. Um, so I also worked really late nights then too. Uh, yes, can I please write my email? Yes, it is. Here you go. Louis um, at club dot com. There you go. All right, making our second leg now. We got a couple of rounds here to go. I'm so excited to have another one of these tortoises, by the way. Honestly, I I love this. I What I keep doing is I'm like, oh, I want to give this person one of these tortoises. I want to give that person one of these tortoises. And I'm like, wait, I can't give away all of them. I want to make more so I have more. So I was actually really excited about this live stream because I was like, yes, I get to make another one of these tortoises. I'll probably make another one after this even because it's just so much fun to make. I really, really can't wait to see what Philip thinks about this pattern. I forgot to text him. I meant to text him earlier today and say, hey, finish the new pattern, check it out. What do you think? Hope you like it. You know, all that fun stuff. feed did you just finish your third foot because i just finished my second so i'm i think i'm catching up a little bit now still got a lot more to make though almost an hour in haven't even finished all my feet usually so i timed myself each one of these feet normally take me about 15 minutes to make so I timed myself because I was like, okay, will I be able to finish this in this in a live stream? And uh, no, the answer is no. I probably won't. Done with all the legs? Amaze fee, what the heck, dude? You are going way quick. That's wild, dude. Ooh, oh, Ivy. Ivy asks, um, this is for me or the rest of the chat. So anybody else that wants to chime in, please do. Uh, thoughts on compression gloves for wrist pain. Um, are there any brand rec uh, recommendations? I'll, I'll tell you what, thoughts on it are recommended. If you have wrist pain, use it. I used to use them a lot when I was starting to uh, get carpal tunnel when I was in high school, because uh, I was crocheting the same thing over and over. And uh, they were super helpful. They're basically these like little gloves. They're like really, really thin gloves, but they're really tight elastic that hold your wrist in like this. And they and it makes it so you can't move your wrist as much so good though they, they honestly they like remove the pain pretty quickly they help reduce the pain but they're also really good for just uh, making sure you don't overdo yourself um, but I'd, also another big recommendation Ivy is uh, take breaks and don't crochet the same thing over and over um, that will be the thing that's giving you wrist pain uh, for me, it was beanies. I was making so many beanies. I was making like four or five beanies a day. Um, and each beanie would take me like a couple hours to make. And because it was like the same motion over and over multiple times a day, like every day of the week, I quickly got carpal tunnel. It was like, it was within like two weeks. And I was like, ow, why does my wrist hurt so bad? I can't move it. So yeah, just be careful because you could do some permanent damage if you're not careful. Yeah, I agree with Beth there. I think you can probably get away with just some cheapo 
ones that you find on like Amazon or something. I think those ones will probably work just fine. There we go. My toe was bugging me. Uh, I can't believe you already have finished all the legs in May Speed. That's that's crazy. Did you start before the live stream or did you start during the live stream? Just curious. You, you're very fast though. I mean, regardless if you were doing it before or after, I'm just I'm just curious. Um, okay. Ooh, Cynthia. Cynthia says that they're getting confused on the WO parts. Uh, you're very rusty. Yeah, I'll be honest. Those parts of the pattern are very tricky. Um, I have one coming up though. Let me show you it in a second, Cynthia. Uh, and I'll show you it in live. Uh, and you can ask any questions about that. You started when I started. Psh, psh, whatever, dude. Whatever, dude. Yeah, I can call you Noah. Uh, I'll do my best to call you Noah to remember that. I wish that I could like put nicknames on, on names so I don't forget. Um, I'm a really bad I'm really, really bad with names. Like, really, really bad with names. I'm gonna tell you one of my most embarrassing stories uh, because because I trust you guys. And I know you won't probably make fun of me, but it'll give you some explanation of how bad I am with names. Um, I have a friend named Sarah. Well, first off, Sarah as a name revolves around my, my name. Uh, for my family. I have a cousin named Sarah. My grandma's name is Sarah. My grandpa's name is Lewis. So his um, his wife's name is Sarah. I should know the name Sarah. One of my best friends is named Sarah. So I have these two friends, Mark and Sarah, that I used to hang out with a lot in San Francisco. And for some reason, I always forgot Sarah's name. I don't know why. Um, but I would always introduce myself to her because I would assume that if I forgot their name, then they probably forgot my name too. So I would be like, Hey, I'm Lewis. And one time she was like, Lewis, you have introduced yourself to me every single time I've seen you. I know your name is Louie. I know you don't have to tell me. And my name is Sarah. You should know that. And I was beat red. I was so, so embarrassed. I was like, oh my God, Sarah, I'm so sorry. I know you, I know your name. I just, I don't know what's wrong with me. I just forget. Um, but ever since that, I've been very, very ultra aware of like messing up people's names. Uh, that being said, I haven't really gotten any better. I'm just ultra aware that I have forgot someone's name and I try to find ways to get around it. Uh, but yeah. I, I, I'm really bad with names, so I'm sorry if I forget it. Uh, Noah. <laughs> Noah, you're making a salamander friend. Very cool. Uh, Hill, uh, what is my cat's name? That is Jimbo. Jimbo the cat. Here, let's, let's take a quick cat cam look. Look at how cute that kitty is. Oh my gosh. He's the best. He's a little bit rambunctious, extremely loud, and... Uh, really really likes to play but you can't deny how adorable that cat is i mean that's a that's a 10 out of 10 on the cat's richter scale in my opinion cute little dude cute little dude okay all right so i'm coming up now to the uh first of those uh wo rounds um uh, this is for Twiz and uh, Cynthia. Um, first, I'm going to do the back loop only round. So I'm going to just crochet into this back loop only here. Do a slip stitch there and then get back around to it. And then I'll show you how to work around it. But notice how, as I did that, notice this little bar right here. Keep a needle handy while you do this because it'll be easier to like point these things out to yourself. That is your round. This is the stitch you're gonna work into in the next round instead of working into the stitch like normal. You're gonna work over it into this stitch. But let's get back around to it and I'll show you what that means. 
Uh, in this round, you also are working into the back loops only on the front here, but these ones are not going to be used for WO rounds, so we're also working the back loops only. These ones are just for cosmetics, so they're just to uh, just to make a line on your tortoise's kneecap so that it looks like a kneecap, you know, like where the where the leg turns. Okay, just a couple more stitches here. Let's go. Wow! Oops! Wow! Ooh! There we go. One and two. Okay, now we are back on the next round. <laughs> yeah, did Jimbo in donut mode. Uh, I do need to work on a Jimbo pattern for sure. Okay, so now we're on to, um, I'm on round eight of the legs and you'll see this next stitch here. Let me zoom in. You see this next stitch here, um, right here, that's gonna be where the next stitch is, but that's not where we're gonna be working into. This stitch, we're gonna work over. So we're working, that's what WO means, work over. So we're working over this stitch and into this stitch beneath it. You wanna work into this front loop only, just like that. Like get your crochet hook just like how this needle is working. And you can kinda of see how that bar looks right there. If you are having a hard time finding that, what you can also do is just work straight into this stitch and in through the back. That also works. Um, it's a little bit more noticeable, a little bit more, um, like it'll make your stitch look a little bit different, a little bit weird, but it totally works also if, you, if you're having a really difficult time getting into just that back loop only. So I'm gonna take my crochet hook. The, sometimes it's hard to get your crochet hook into position. So what I do is I'll pull my crochet hook out like this. That way I get some like uh, motion with my crochet hook. And then I go straight up from the bottom of where that front loop only is like this straight up from the bottom and notice how it came all the way through and now i want to like kind of i don't want to go all the way through i only want to get through that front first front loop gosh the focus keeps changing hold on there we go okay so we only want under that front loop so we're just going to go like that sometimes you can just wiggle your way through it uh, or like i was saying before what you can do is you can go straight in and then turn your hook around so that the hook hooks onto that front loop and then you can push your way up like that. Both of those are valid ways to do it. But once you're in there, you pull your loop tight so you don't have like this really loose loop moving around and then you do a regular single crochet like that. And then after that, you just work your single crochets as normal. So the next one is gonna be right here. You can kind of see how this one's getting stretched out. The next one's right there. And what I do is I just poke straight down and then up and now I'm under both loops like that. Now, I say this in the beginning of the video tutorial of this pattern, um, so because this pattern is pretty d difficult, I, I do say this pattern is really not designed for beginners. So if you are a complete beginner and you're trying to crochet this pattern, you're gonna have a difficult time with it, and I'm sorry about that. Um, but. I, you know, every now and then it's fun to design ones that are for more advanced crocheters. So if you're having a really, really difficult time with understanding the different stitches here, this pattern might just be a little bit further, like a little too advanced for you maybe. Um, so you might want to try some of the easier ones. Maybe try the sea turtle one. Uh, the sea turtle is interesting because it's like, it's a little bit easier to like actively crochet, but it's actually a little bit more difficult to sew together in my opinion. Um, but it is easier to crochet. So that one might be a good option for you. But, um, but yeah, that's, that's my, that's my sh spiel. Uh, let me know if that helps Cynthia and, uh, uh, who else? Triz. Let me know if that helps. Um, and, uh, if not, hopefully I can give you more explanations a little bit later. You can see I'm doing another back loop only slip stitches right now because um, I'm doing round nine of one of the legs. But yeah, I hope that helps. What if you are an in-between, in-between beginner and, and advanced? I would say, I mean, this pattern I, is like on the border between medium and, and hard. It's like right in between the two. So I think you can do it. It just might take you a little bit more time than, than other, than you, yeah.
Oh, interesting question, Noah. Um, oh, Susan, good good question. I'll, I'll get back to your question in a second, Noah. Susan asks, um, what are we doing next week? Next week, uh, we're going to be doing a live stream design along for Mother's Day. So next week uh, is the... We're going to be doing it on Thursday, same time, same place, 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Uh, and we're going to be designing a little pot of flowers. So I thought it would be fun to do a brand new surprise pattern um, that works with the new seasonal crochet kits. And also make something for my mom. So we're going to be making a little tiny pot of, of little daisies. Uh, and it's going to be a brand new surprise design along live stream where I won't know how to make it before I make it. So, yeah. So we're going to be making it together and figuring it out live on, on stream. And then I'll put the pattern up on the website after the live stream. That's the guy idea. That's the idea. Yes, I, I would say, Cynthia, this pattern, uh, another thing that I say in the beginning of the video tutorial is this pattern is much easier to do with cotton yarn because the yarn is so, it's like much more clear to see your stitches. So that is a caveat. If you're using fuzzy yarn, it's going to be harder to see those front loops only. Hi, Samantha. Oh, you did a live stream. Oh, I hope it went well. I didn't know that, Samantha. Was it on your YouTube channel? Like on this channel that you're attached to right now? Oh, it was, I see. Oh, you've done a few live streams. That's so cool. Oh, I don't know if you live streamed on this channel or not, but still really cool. Oh, thanks, Marilise. I appreciate that. I do remember Humanity. I remember Humanity very, very well. I liked that a lot. I think it's still somewhere in here under my legs right now. Let's see. Am I subscribed? I'm not subscribed on the... I'll subscribe on the Club Crochet channel for you. I think that's the one I'm not subscribed on. If I can get to it though. There you go. I am now. All right. How do I transport my projects when I travel? Well, usually I don't have to worry too much about transporting my projects because be, because my projects are so tiny so I usually just put them in a in a crochet bag so I'll either bring um, I have a bunch of uh, these oh wait that wasn't supposed to be that stitch um, I have a bunch of uh, like these I have a bunch of these everywhere they're like um, uh, money bags from um animal crossing and then i just fill them with crocheted projects or or yeah stuff that i'm working on i think that's your i think that's your answer or answer to your question um okay yeah it's that fuzzy yarn fuzzy yarn is not the easiest to do this pattern with sorry about that sorry about that hill i should have uh, made that more apparent in the intro I think it's possible, but you know, it's just a little bit harder to distinguish where your stitches are with fuzzy yarn. Um, am I tired? Yes, I'm. I am a little tired. Uh, once I finish this leg, maybe I'll make myself a coffee. Maybe we'll do a little coffee break. As long as you guys don't leave. As long as you don't bounce. It'll be a quick, quick coffee break. Just want to make one um we'll do a little iced coffee yeah cynthia i try to tell people that beginners that a lot saying like hey when you're a beginner don't buy acrylic yarn all the time like you're just gonna have acrylic yarn forever and feel like you need to get rid of it 
um, at least that's what I did. Like I have so much, I had so much acrylic yarn that I was never gonna use because I don't like using acrylic yarn. So I just donated it all one day. I was like, I don't need this. It's out of here. It's just taking up space and something that someone else might wanna use. Um, okay, Noah's question. What was Noah's question? What is the worst thing that's happened to you when you're making a crochet pattern? And you can, can you tell us another story? Um, I don't know what the absolute worst thing is, but I can tell you one that happened recently while I was designing this pattern. Um, so the other night I was designing this tortoise pattern. Uh, it was like 3 a.m. and I decided, you know what I want while I design this pattern on the couch? I want an orange juice. Such a goof. I don't know why I wanted orange juice super late at night, but I did. And I really like orange juice with high pulp. That is the way I drink my orange juice. I like to chew my orange juice. Ew, what? That's nah, true. Um, and... Did I have water? You know what? I don't think I have had much water today. I need to definitely make a, make a coffee and water break after this. Um, but anyhow, so I was, I got all sat down to crochet my project. I put everything down, uh, and I was on the couch and Phoebe came up, jumped on my lap and I was like, oh, oh, hi Phoebe. Hi. And then I knocked over the orange juice, full glass, high pulp orange juice all over my lap, all over my project, all over the couch, 3 a.m. Poor Jules was fast asleep downstairs. So I had to be like really quiet, soak everything up, clean everything off. Uh, and and I tried to clean off the project the best I could. Um, but yeah, that that was a big bummer. That, that made my life like way, like, just that night I was like, oh, come on. I was like all prepared. Everything was looking all pretty. I was like ready to ready to sit and crochet. I was already I had already finished like like two thirds of a turtle because I was working on a on on the tortoise. So I had to just like scrap it and start from scratch. That sucked. That was a recent one for me, and that was definitely like oh man, what a bummer. But it all worked out. Hey, yeah, listen, listen to Crochandro, whose name is, they told me last week, and see, remember what I said about names? I have a hard time remembering them. Uh, what is your name, Crochandro? I can't remember. You asked me to call you something, but I can't remember what it was. Um, anyhow, like this video. <laughs> like they said, like this video. Yes, it actually was, Julie. I did have to actually sweep it up. It was gross. Dang, Cooper! Cooper is flying. Already finished his legs. Dang. We're gonna have a bunch of people done with their pattern before me this week. Oh, AJ emailed me last week because um, we were talking about doing, uh, like, because I told AJ that they would win something for, for beating me in crochet, uh, and they did. So... But we were talking and they were like, hey, what if what if I was like had my stream at the same time and we were like raced on live? And I think that's a little too complicated and hard to make. But they did uh I did have a good idea. We should do something where we do like a um a way we can share pictures with each other and then I can like put like a hashtag speed crochet or something like that. Uh, I don't know, speed run crocheting or something. And then you can put, put pictures of your progress live during the live stream and we can have it on screen over the cat cam and they'll pop up over the cat cam. I don't know how to do it yet. I've got to figure that out, but I do think that would be really, really cool. So I'm going to talk to my web designer, um, Jimmy, to see if they can help me figure that out for these live streams. Uh, because I think that would be way, way, way cool. Uh, can I please email you back about moderation? Yes, I can, Samantha. Um, I'm sorry. I thought I had finished that email, but apparently I had goofed that up. My bad. My bad. Ooh. 
Itchy back is itchy. Uh, da, 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 da. Ooh, talent show auditions. That's cool. Oh, Crochet River Parker, what what did what was your name that you liked me calling you as well? You had a name for me that you asked me to call you rather than the full username, but I can't remember what it was because I'm having a brain fart because I haven't had coffee today yet. Remind me if you can in the chat. I just got done telling a story how I'm really, really bad with names. So, uh, yeah, super apologies. Oh, just river. Okay, that's easy. Easy squeezy. I can remember that. Probably. Hi, river. Is my back hurting? My back is hurting a little bit. Uh, it's not that bad anymore. Um, I used to have like really, really bad back pains. Uh, turned out I had like a herniated disc and stuff um, but it's not hurting that bad anymore it's really my neck that starts to hurt me now um, but I actually just started doing the stretch for it yesterday that's been helping a lot okay Yeah, I definitely need a coffee if I want to compete at all in this speedrun crochet. The time I'm going to spend to make that coffee, though, is going to really cut into my crochet time. I know, right? Jimbo Crescent Roll, so cute. Once I finish this, we'll, we'll watch the cat cam for just a sec as I go make my coffee. Last round of my last leg. Super duper behind schedule though. It's already 4.15. We're almost like, what, like halfway done with the stream and I'm not, I'm not halfway done with the pattern. I think once I finish the, the body, I'm about halfway done. So we're like a little bit less than halfway. The body can be a little tricky though. I might actually use a stitch marker for the body even though I don't usually use stitch markers just because it's a little tricky to remember where you're at I believe that was the last stitch okay all right legs are done pretty cute pretty cute we're gonna go ahead and put these to the side all right, now I'm gonna go ahead and make myself a coffee real quick and be right back. Um, and when I come back, we'll be making the hat in, or the head. In the meantime, uh, please don't leave. Uh, just keep this on in the corner. I'll only be like four or five minutes probably. Um, but if you have to go, I totally understand. Thank you for joining. Uh, like this video down below and enjoy the cat cam. Be right back.
Coffee's almost done. Almost done. Finished my coffee. Look at that. Look how beautiful it is too. Wow. Oh, wow. All right. I am back. Let's keep on crocheting on. Thank you for your patience. So sorry about that. Let's see, what did I miss? And he waddled away the coffee, 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 coffee. Thank you, Marilise. All right, let's get back to it. Uh, yes, go, go for it, Cassandra. Uh, yeah, feel free to email me. Uh, uh, anything really, but especially like a pattern like that. Yeah, go for it. All right. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm working on. I'm gonna work on the body. Oh, dang. Does that mean that someone said they were working on the head? That means that you already finished the body? Wow. Well, yeah, now I'm like super far behind, but probably. So I got I got some catching up to do for sure. Wow, Amaze Feed, you're gonna be done by the end of the hour. You're going so, so fast, dude. What what yarn are you using to crochet with? Are you making it with um cotton yarn? Or are you making it with like smaller yarn. I noticed that um, I noticed that AJ's turtle from last week seemed like it was a little smaller. Like maybe he made it. They made it with like cotton, like like smaller than worsted weight yarn, uh, which is kind of cool. But I don't know. Oh, uh, Hill. Uh, this is my main gig. Yes, this is my main gig. Um, uh, how long have I been doing it full time? Only about a year and a half. Uh, November of 20, I think 2021 is when I quit my job. Um, and prior to that, I was working as a, um, I was working in marketing uh, as the head of video production and uh, graphic design at a company called Top Coder. Um, I made motion graphics animation, which is basically like, like uh, fun animated videos for um, different projects that we had. Uh, it was a company that was, um, the company I worked for was a, we basically were app an app developer for larger companies. So like, companies like NASA and stuff would come to us and ask for an app to be made. And I was 
um, a marketing consultant for them. So I would I would basically be like, hey, you know, we need more people to sign up for this challenge, or we need more people to see this cool product that we made. So I'm gonna make videos for it, and, uh, and then I was social media manager for them. I basically just did all kinds of marketing stuff for them. Yeah, that's what I did before. What is my favorite song? My favorite song is uh, from Blossom Deary. Uh, that is my f probably my favorite artist. Uh, and my favorite song is They, they Say It's Spring from Blossom Deary. It goes, They say it's spring, this feeling light as a feather. They say this thing, this feeling we share together came with the weather too very good i like that i like that song quite a lot yeah um definitely definitely translated well uh for for youtube and stuff um my i did this the whole time i worked there i actually started uh, a crochet business in high school um i went by louis loops uh and i made um a whole bunch of uh, beanies and patterns and stuff uh, and then I started club crochet I think about like six years ago someone remind me how long oh chat is not working on your end oh it's working seems like it's working over here huh um onyx hello welcome to the chat um but I started club crochet I, I did a kickstarter for a uh, a 101 crocheting series called crocheting 101 how to crochet for complete beginners uh, and then i used all the funds from that kickstarter to start club crochet uh, and then just started yeah making a whole bunch of patterns after that and yeah let me know if you have any other questions about the history <laughs> uh thank you for asking by the way what is my favorite color my favorite color is probably either purple or teal or maroon um all three of those i'm a big fan of uh mostly probably one two three and then an increase uh, mostly probably uh purple and teal are my main my favorite colors which is actually why club crochet is like our logo and stuff those are my favorite colors um, that's why it's the logo is because I like those colors so much. Yeah, I'm a fan. I'm a fan of myself, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, my Lose Loops videos were great. I wish I could, like had more time to make more of those, honestly. But now there's like so many patterns and stuff that I do that it's kind of hard to keep track. Um, okay, I'm gonna do the prod the the place marker. I'm gonna do after round eight. Um, there is a place marker that I need to add in this round, though. But we can do it after the next round. One, two. Increase. this live stream no not this live stream but if this video gets 150 likes we'll do another giveaway next live stream so you should like this video um, I think this is my last stitch four and I think it's right there I really should be using a stitch marker um, let's see yeah that's it okay so we got a stitch marker in two Stitch number two from this round, so that's one, two. Stitch number eleven from last from the round before, so that's gonna be. 
So that's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six. Eight, nine, ten, eleven. Well, I think eleven will be this stitch right here. There we go. And then one, two. Yep. Cool. So those are going to be our little stitch markers to keep uh, to know where to sew on the legs later on. I decided on this pattern to save myself some time, mark the place markers where I want to add the legs early so I don't lose track of that later on. I also got this green one. Okay. 102 likes so far? That's pretty good. We're already almost at the goal for a giveaway, which is pretty cool. Wait, so I'm sorry. One, two... Okay. Oh, interesting, Amaze. Amaze feed. You're super fast because you're a left-handed crocheter. You think that makes you quicker? Why do you think that makes you quicker? I'm, I'm not discounting that, by the way. I think you definitely might be quicker than the average crocheter, but I'm really curious on why that might be. Why, why you think that might have to do with how you're so fast at crocheting. The body for this turtle, by the way, is so weird looking when you're done with it. You're like, what the heck? How is this going to be the body? But it works out. I'll tell you, I'll tell you, it works out. Oh, yes, that's who you are, River. Akari on your sister's account. That's right, River. That's funny. They're stressing out so much about this talent show so you can get a good night's sleep uh ooh. okay how do we how do we chill out river from being stressed out about their talent show that they're gonna do let's see i think the first thing to note to to remember river is that um that regardless of how the talent show goes, um, the your worst critic is gonna be yourself. Um, that's what I always tell Jules. Like, she gets she can she'll do shows every now and then, and she'll get really bummed with how the show goes. But I'm always telling her like, like I was in the audience, I didn't notice all the things that she will tell me about. She'll be like, oh, this went wrong and this went wrong. This person missed their mark. And I'll, and I'll always be like, Jules, you're the only one that noticed that. Like, I, I, I never would notice that. And I've seen the show twice already and I never notice it. Um, but that's kind of just how it goes. Like, you're just always gonna be stressed and worried about it uh, for your own sake. But really, it's always in your own head. Um, Sometimes I, I remember really, really embarrassing things that happened to me when I was like young. Uh, and when I think it about, when I try to think about embarrassing things that happened to other people, I can't ever remember any of them. And that's because I don't care about what happened to another person that was embarrassing because it was an embarrassing moment for like a second, but then after that it was over. But for me, I'll never forget. You know, it's like those embarrassing things you'll never forget. But having the realization that like, oh, no one else remembers that. I'm the only one that remembers X, Y, Z. Um, I don't want to think about the embarrassing things in my life right now. But uh, <laughs> that is, that always helped me uh, to be not too stressed about like things that 
don't go well because it's that's on you like it's it, don't don't stress too much about what other people think about that um another thing is breathe breathe drink a lot of water breathe chill deep breaths everything's gonna be okay everything is gonna be a-okay time keeps on trugging on like regardless of what happens your time is gonna keep keep moving so just relax everything's gonna be okay uh, and yeah time time will move past this and just like everything else in life it'll just keep moving on which sometimes is really really that's difficult to come to terms with in and of itself but there's nothing nothing you can do about it unfortunately they're the laws of the world I don't know how helpful that was <laughs> I have I have these like mental um, things that I tell myself to make myself feel better when I'm having a bad day or stressing out and sometimes I tell them to Jules and she does not find them helpful they are actively very very much not helpful to Jules um, and it makes me realize like that like sometimes the things that help for me they're not gonna help for anybody else they're they're literally they're, they're for me so yeah sorry if sorry if what I said wasn't as helpful as as I I'm trying to make it there's one thing in specific that I tell Jules when I stress out and she does not like it and I won't repeat it right now because <laughs> I think for most people it's a bummer <laughs> Um, do I have any recommendations that you can make for your course teacher's birthday? Ooh, good question. Well, what's your course teacher into outside of like choir? Like, are, do they like, like, I remember I had a teacher that was, that I really uh, liked that I wanted to make a gift for that was really into elephants. And so I made them an elephant. Is there anything like that? Or maybe make them a burb. Burbs are always, honestly, burbs are always a great gift. And they're always a great gift because they're just so silly. They're like the silliest things ever. And they, they just like make some, they make people smile. They make me smile at least. Three, is that right? Three, same crochet nine. Ooh, Cooper's done with the body. Yeah, good, congratulations. I'm, I'm catching up to you there, Coop. I'm catching up. Oh, hey Taylor, my brother, hey bud. That's my brother in the chat. I'll give you a call after this. Um. Is it that, no, that, no, that's not the, that's not the thing that I tell myself. Um, she's also the drama teacher. Hmm. Hmm. Burbs do make people happy. Oh, my, my. My helpfulness was less than helpful for Akari. Sorry, Akari. Okay, Atlas, thanks for joining. I'll see you in a little bit. Um, I'm gonna add our next stitch markers real quick. Uh, we wanna add a stitch marker for the back legs and I actually totally forgot to do that a second ago. So it's gonna be in round 11 and round 12, so. Pretty sure it's like right here. Pretty sure it's like right there. And then on the other side. So it's like two rounds above it, right? So, so that would be, that's round eight, that's round nine, 
that's round 10, that's round 11. Stitch number 15, and then a stitch over here. I just finished, what round did I just finish? I just finished round 13. No, I just finished round 14, I think. Yes. Just finished round 14, so I need to put a place marker in round 12 and round, okay, so that's round 14. That's round 13. This is round 12. And round 12, it's stitch number 10. I think, yeah, it is this stitch. And then the other one is over here. I believe it's right. I think it's right here. That feels right. Oh, well, maybe it's once. No, that feels right. Yeah. go with that. that that feels right to me let's keep going I just finished round 14 so keep going on to round 15 man the, the body stitches are tough it's the slip stitches they're so difficult okay nine of those and we're, we're actually we're almost done with the body which is pretty good honestly after this well the head that's right the head the head is a little bit tricky but honestly I think the trickiest parts are the body and the legs and then sewing it together I mean I always just hate sewing things together just in general but I need to loosen my stitches up while I go though. Crocheting, I'm trying to catch up to you guys, so I'm crocheting it too tight. There we go. Loosen my stitch up. There we go. Alright, back to it. One. Do I have any tips to avoid shredding the yarn when working with Chanel yarn? Wow, this is a very specific question. Um it's just it just wants to pull off the end in pieces and doesn't want to be pulled into a magic loop huh pull off the end of pieces and doesn't want to be turned into a magic loop very interesting valkyrie so it sounds to me i i don't know personally because i can't I, I can't think of what chanel yarn feels like to crochet with but um in my experience if a piece is having a very difficult if I'm having a very difficult time turning it into a magic loop because it keeps breaking or, and getting pulled off into different little pieces um, what I do is I use a different kind of magic loop or I use the chain two method um, either way is going to be easier to uh, do because the magic loop my favorite way to do the magic loop is easy to break the yarn with because it's not like doubling up the yarn it's just using it once so Here's my tip. My tip is A, check out, um, <laughs> that's funny, Amazefeed, I just read your comment. Um, check out my video on how to do the magic loop. You can find it at clubcrochet.com slash magic loop. There's two ways to do the magic loop in that video. One of the ways is the way I normally do it, which you've seen me do a million times. The other way, is a like it's i call it the magic ring even though they're basically the same thing it's basically you do this you wrap around your index finger like three times or something and then you take this end and go in between and then you go between your fingers stuff like that but the point that i'm saying here is that because you're like doubling up the yarn it's a little bit more difficult to break the yarn as you go so that might work if that doesn't work try the chain two method 
um, just chain two and then work all your stitches into the first chain that you made. And then at the end, if that stitch is too open, sew that stitch closed with an extra strand of yarn. That's what I used to do if my yarn was really, really like uh, prone to breaking. Um, yeah, I hope that helps. Let me know if you need explanation on what the chain two method is. Um, and if you do, I'll, I can show you real quick on how to do it. Um, but I really hope that helps Valkyrie. Let me know if you have any other questions like that. And uh, same goes for anybody in the chat. If you got any crochet questions whatsoever, uh, just let me know. Oh, thanks Noah. That's really sweet of you. Um, okay. That was one, two, three, invisible decrease. Two, one, and two. Then one, two. One. Ugh. Yow. Jeez, I am slip stitching way too tight. Looking pretty good though, as far as like a body goes. It's not bad. I think I might have put these stitch markers a little bit high up, so I might need to sew the leg on a little bit higher, but that's okay. Hey, uh, like this video. If you haven't liked it already, like it, please. It would be great. And also share your project with me. Uh, if you didn't know, we do have a Discord channel and a Facebook group. Um, both are great places for you to share your projects, uh, but you can also share them on Instagram by using hashtag club crochet. Uh, and we are now sharing at least one picture every day on the club crochet stories, uh, that people post on with hashtag club crochet. So if you would like to be featured on our Instagram, uh, that's the best way to do it. Just post with hashtag club crochet. You know, follow us in all the places. But we are on Instagram. We're on Tiki Talkies. We're on the Facebookies. I'm even on Reddit. Honestly, I'm on Reddit a little too much. <laughs> one, two, one more. Right there. Three. I'm excited to design some, like a little planter for my mom next week um i don't know how i'm gonna do it i don't know what i'm gonna make yet but it should be fun regardless all right i'm gonna go ahead and hide this ended hi bubby crafts how are you how is your day going hope you're doing well i can already feel the coffee that i made during the live stream starting to like kick in it's funny how it's probably not even like the caffeine in the in it like actually doing anything for me it's probably more so that like i get like a mental connection with coffee where i'm like there's coffee in you now don't you feel better louie does that make sense to anybody else you're gonna be fine river you're gonna be fine all this will be a blip. Hello, Clay Acopo uh, Apocalypse. Acopolypse. Hello, Clay Acopolypse. All right. There's the body. Looks kind of weird. Looks like a weird leech, kind of. But it is the body. So we're going to put that off to the side. Next, we want to make the head. And then we can continue on to the shells. Which I, yeah, so I'm pretty far behind actually. We're probably gonna be going till seven tonight, which not preferable, but whatever. What are you gonna do? What you gonna do? Okay. Oh, I'm excited to have a forest green version of this tortoise though. Two, three, four, five, and six. Is that correct? Yes. How are you doing, Clay? 
<laughs> At least I have a leech pattern now. Yes, exactly. Oh, uh, uh, Cosmo, you had a question about what a succulent is. Um, this, I'll show you what the succulent is. One second. It's a type of plant. It looks like... It looks like something that I don't have here for some reason. Where did I put it? Jimbo's very curious of what I'm doing. This is a succulent, by the way, Cosmo. This is what I was working on last night. Very cute, very cute. Also, super secret because there's only like 40 people in this live stream right now. This is for you. Secret, 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 secret face. Secret face on this succulent. Just kidding. Yeah. Also, he's got secret legs. Okay, bye. He's gonna hide. Okay, back to it. One. Two. One. Two. Oh, really? Oh, yes, the woggles. Oh, I miss the woggles. I mean, it's not that I don't see them. I see them all the time, but... I know exactly what you're talking about. I love the Woggles. They're my, by the way, if you don't know what the Woggles are, they're they're these little crocheted aliens. They're not crocheted. I found them on the beach and they just look like they're crocheted to blend in. Yeah, that succulent pattern will be out uh, somewhat soon. That's funny. That's funny, Noah, that I'm the only one that replies to chat. You know, I was talking to Philip about this the other day, um, Sir Pearl Gray. Uh, we were getting lunch the other day. He was in he was in California, and he was just like, so I tried to record a video where I was like teaching how to crochet it while I was recording it, like you do, and it's so tough. I don't know how you do it, and and I have no idea how you do the live stream chat. Like, how do you talk to the chat while you're crocheting? And, and I was like, uh, I don't know. I just do like, I guess, I don't know how I do it. I just do it. Uh, but then I thought about it more and I was like, you know what? I think it's just practice. Like I've just been doing this now. I've been doing live stream crochet longs now for five, six years. I started club crochet like five years ago, probably six years. So yeah, probably five or six years. And I just do one every single week. And by now it's just like kind of my, you know, it's like a different part of my brain is working at the same time. And I could just crochet while I talk pretty easy. Um, I just feel very fortunate that I can do this now, but it's interesting that not a lot of people do it. You know, it is kind of tough, I will be honest, but. All right, River. Be right back. All right, see you in a little bit. Faces make everything kawaii. Totemo kawaii desu ne? We should make this kawaii. Let's see. What kind of face should we do on this? I'll we'll have to vote. Maybe we'll do a vote on, on face. Actually, yeah, let's do a vote on what to do for the face because I'm about to make the face. I think we'll keep the eyes as normal. I think what, what I want to vote on is how do we make the mouth? Do we want a simple smile? Do we want a straight mouth, like very serious mouth? Do we want a fat boy mouth? Do we want a kissy face? Um, let's see, what else? What other kind of faces could we do? Oh, a tongue sticking out. Yeah, okay, let's go ahead and do a vote. That's a good idea. Good idea is good. Smile. 
Um, derpy, uh... There we go. You know what's something I noticed about this pattern that's kind of cool too? Is that you can make different heads for it. So I actually made a secondary head for one of these tortoises. Here, I'll show you it actually. Jimbo's like, what are you doing over here? Dropped it somewhere. Okay. So this is what I, this is another version of the head that I made. Uh, Jules was not a big fan of this. So here, by the way, here's the regular turtle. Here's the secondary head that I made. You can see it's like way, way bigger of a head. Jules did not like it, was not a big fan. Um, she didn't like the way that the eyes were and she didn't like the smile. So then I went and made it into this one instead, a little bit more simple. Uh, but you can, I can easily just like put this head into the body of this one. So let's, is this the good, no, let's do the other one. So if we do this one, let me pull this head out. It's hard to get out. But you can actually replace it with this head instead. So if we really don't like whatever face you guys end up choosing, I've always got a backup. But yeah, see, check it out. It's basically the same thing, but just like a slightly larger head. So here, I'll show you it next to a, this is the other version. So you can see how it's different and see how it's different in the front. But it still does tuck in and out. It just doesn't tuck in as far as this head does. So, yeah. What do you think? Which head do you like more? I mean, it's too late. I'm already, I'm, this is the head that we went with. But just out of curiosity, which one do you like more? Ooh, a piece of lettuce in his mouth. Oh, that's kind of cute. We could do that. That's a fun idea. Where was I in this head, by the way? Two and then into this. Okay. One. Two. Invisible decrease. You like the big head. Do I have a pattern for it? I don't, but I can tell you it really quick, Twiz. Um, basically... I'll rattle it off for you. Most of the pattern's the same as the regular head. It's just there's more increases and then decreases. So, um, you know what? Why don't you email me if you'd like? If you'd like the pattern for that other secondary version of the head, uh, email me Louis at clubcrochet.com. I'll send you all the information for how that head was made. Um, I think that'll be maybe a little bit easier for me than explaining it on the live stream because you. You know, it'll be written out for you. Um, okay, we're on round eight. One. Ooh, a maze feed. You're making a stitch set. Man, I want to play stitch with you. I want to play stitch with all of you. Because, like... I have a lot of friends in my life that I've shown Stitch to, and, and they think it's cool, um, and they like it, but none of them are crocheters, you know? I don't really have any crochet friends other than, like, Philip, and I've never played Stitch with Philip. Four, five, six, seven, eight, no, seven. Got it. Fat loop, only three single crochet. Ooh, that's a, oh, no, three slip stitches. Got it. I thought I... Found a mistake in my pattern, but I found a mistake in my reading. Oopsie. Three slip stitches, single crochet. Okay, we're adding a face. Um, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add the eyes because I know where I want the eyes. Uh, by the way, bottle of eyes like this in the shop. We still have a few more of these left over. I think I've got like 20 more. 
I got I got some more that I found in the in my storage. So if you want to get a bottle of eyes like that, um, they are available and a great way to support this channel if you'd like to. Okay. It's round three that we want to add these eyes into. Stitch number one and stitch number five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so that's where we're gonna add the eyes. I won't lock them in just yet because I wanna add the mouth uh, and see what kind of mouth you guys want because I might need to move the mouth around depending on where you guys, which mouth you guys chose. What did we go with? Tongue out, ooh, barely. Barely squeaking out with the tongue out rather than the fat face, love it. Okay, uh, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna do both. Because it was so close of a vote, let's just do a fat face with its tongue out, right? I like that idea. I definitely like the tongue out idea for this because this pattern is the because the yarn is that we're using is forest green. It'd be easier to use a like a, a darker, or I mean, like it's going to be hard to notice like a dark color for the face if we don't if we're not careful so all right so this is how i add my fat my fat face i also call it the derpy face so go in through there and down through like i'm gonna come up through that so down through like here-ish yeah here I'm just gonna do a fat face on half of it. Like he'll have like half, like he's like, kind of like that. And that way we can do a, a mouth next to it too. So it goes on this side. Boom. And then it goes over like this. Ah, oh, no, 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 no. Actually, wait, we gotta do this again. I'm gonna try to do this a little bit easier. I know I want to come up there, so we're gonna go up to this one, and we'll go down through here instead. Yeah, that's where we want. Like that. Okay. That's I. Okay. Oh man. Atlas, I'm actually working on something for that. So I'm working on a story mode for Stitch. I haven't worked on it in a, like a few months, but the idea is it takes Stitched and turns it into a role-playing game like Dungeons and Dragons, and it's really, really cool. I'm super duper proud of it. It's kind of hard to explain. Well, actually, no, you know what? It's not that hard to explain. I just don't know. It's just not fully thought through yet like that so do I want a double fat mouth nah just one side fat that's fine okay so there is the mouth itself let's get a little better to look see so see that little bit of a fatness and then it goes straight forward because we're gonna add a tongue right here it's like he's got bubble gum in his mouth or something. And we got a tortoise chewing bubble gum. That'd be kind of cute. Haha, <laughs> crafty kittens, you're funny. Um, okay, so, yeah, the RPG element to Stitched, I'll explain how it kind of works. So. Every character gets, you know, their regular stats. They got their intelligence, their speed, and their strength. Um, but the role playing also adds a character's soul or their spirit. I, I'm not sure what to call it yet. If it's their spirit or their soul, but every type of character gets a, a little bit higher of spirit or soul. And then your, you, if you do something in the game. So like, let's say you do like. Um, Oh my god, if you make a whole secondary one, uh, 
Ooh, good question, Linda. I'll answer that in a second. If you make a whole secondary tortoise before I finish my one tortoise, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I don't know what I'm gonna do. A maze feed, but you know what? I'll tell you what, if you truly can finish a secondary tortoise, by the time I finish my first tortoise, I will give you a prize just like I gave AJ last week. That's my, that's, that's your reward if you can do it. I am not saying you should do that, but you can do that if you want to. Look at Jimbo. Oh, look at my kitty. Look at that cute cat. He's barely balancing. That's so cute. Um, okay, someone asked, uh, Linda asks, silly question, but do you count the stitches or the holes to place the eyes? Thank you. Linda, that is not a silly question at all. That's a really, really, really good question because it depends on the patterns. Sometimes I like to put stitch, I like to put the eyes between two stitches, which is what I did in this pattern. So for this one, I'm counting the holes in between stitches. So like, let me give you an example. Like if I were to count, this is, this is the first stitch in the next round. This is the first stitch in that round. This is the hole in between two stitches. So in this case, I put it in between stitch number zero and one is where I put the eye. Sometimes though, I put the eyes in between stitches. If I just can't find the right spot to put an eye, sometimes what I'll do is I'll find a stitch like this and I'll put my crochet or my needle, let's see, can I get it focused right? There we go. Yeah, I can put my needle in between a stitch. Instead of going in between two stitches like that, I'll go in between one stitch like this, bring my needle out till only the whole part of my needle is in there and then I twist it like that to stretch out the stitch and make it a little bit more noticeable like that so you can kind of see through it there and then I put an eye in between a stitch it depends on what I'm making but sometimes it's really hard to find a good spot to put eyes um, so yeah sometimes I do that uh, but yeah good question I hope that answers your question um, let me know if you have other questions about that though Okay, let's get some pink yarn for its our tortoise's tongue. I thought I had some pink in here somewhere. Ah, there it is. We just need a little bit. I'm not gonna like crochet a tongue and then sew a tongue on. I'm just gonna embroider a tongue on because we don't really have a lot of like room to work with here for the tongue. So I think it'd be easier just to do it this way. And let's see, do we do the tongue on the side with the fat or the other side? I'll do it right here. So come up through this stitch. Yeah, this would be good. And we'll go down through the center of this stitch and let's look at that i'll probably triple it up that's what i'm thinking i'm gonna do that looks pretty cute i think that's pretty clearly gonna be a tongue right do we like this uh sorry i'll continue talking about stitch in just a second uh cosmo but thank you so much for reminding me um you know how i am i get lost i lose track of what i'm talking about as i crochet you know what, I think two is just enough to make it look like a tongue because it'll look like there's a line in between the two ends of the tongue, right? That looks pretty cute. Does that look like a tongue? I think it looks like a tongue. I kind of wish this line looked more like a mouth, but it's not bad actually. Right, that looks like a tongue. Like, what else would it be? Okay, cool. Atlas likes it. If Atlas likes it, then I likes it. Oh, we can name this tortoise. Um, normally, the, tuck, the tortoise's name is Tuck, but we can add a name to this tortoise, too. Also, to give a maze feed a little bit more time to crochet, we might end up making a hat for this tortoise. No promises, but it's not a bad idea. And I mean, we can vote on the kind of hat when it comes to that, but 
like in my opinion in my professional opinion i have owned a tortoise in my life so i have a very professional opinion here in my professional opinion tortoises deserve to have bowler hats sorry oh i'm so sorry i'm gonna get a fight in the chat about tortoise tortoises and their bowler hats what if i actually did get really, like really worked up about that i was like no f you <laughs> tortoises are supposed to have bowler hats <laughs> anyhow i am not crazy okay one just finished the face okay so we're gonna keep track of our progress here one invisible two invisible decreases one and two and then single crochet two And then we're gonna do our working over stitches for three. One, two, and three. And then we can keep going. Cool, there we go. That's cute. Oh my God, this is gonna be cute. Hey, thanks for the little hearts. I can see that. I can see the little hearts when you press it. I see it. Thank you for doing that. Um, okay. Ooh, cowboy hat. Ooh, actually not a bad idea. Not a bad idea, Valkyrie. And a little lasso. Oh, stop it. Stop it. Oh, dang it. Dang it. Oh, a pinwheel hat. Oh, a bonnet. Oh my God. You guys stop. These are all really good ideas. Oh my gosh. The maze food's totally going to beat me to their second turtle or tortoise at this rate. Because there's going to be all these hats that I want to make. One. And then single crochet three. Is that right? That can't be right. One, invisible decrease, one, two. Oh yeah, I guess so, okay. Three. And then, okay. Ah, ah, too aggressive, too aggressive, Lou, relax. Oh my gosh, a beanie with a little pom-pom also would be really, really cute. Wow, we got a lot of good good options here. All of them are good. We're gonna have to write these down. A cool pair of shades. I don't know if we'll be able to get shades on this, but not a bad idea. One, another invisible decrease. Then one, two, and then our workarounds. One, two. Oh, I need a pre order Zelda. Hey, pre order Zelda. Hold on guys, I'll be right back. I need proof. No, I'm just kidding. I'll do it later. <laughs> That'd be funny though. A race car car helmet for the Oh my gosh, you guys stop. These are all such good ideas. Oh my god. I don't know what I'm gonna do. Okay, wait, hold on. Hold on. We gotta we gotta get we still have crochet to do, you guys, before we choose our hats. And we also gotta do name suggestions. One, two, three, four, back loop only, slip stitch two, okay. One, two, and then 
just run regular single crochet? Yes, okay. sound like character from Mario that's also a good one anybody know what sound effect I'm doing from Mario <laughs> can't name them until we choose a hat that's true that's absolutely true it would be it would be borderline illegal borderline illegal to name it without giving it a hat first. It's just kind of the law. It's like, not not my fault. Like, don't hate the player, hate the game, right? Uh, I will be pre-ordering Cartridge because Jules and I are both gonna wanna play it on our separate Switches. And Switch is not great for pre-ordering digitally and playing it on multiple platforms or multiple consoles. So probably, probably the cartridge. It was not the bonk sound. It was, it was the thwomp. It was a thwomp. That's the noise that I was trying to do. Ooh. I think when Mario bonks his head, it's like, ooh. What's a Robin? Oh, a Robin Hood hat. That would be kind of cute. Timmy the tortoise. I used to have a tortoise uh, named Speedy. I've told this story a few times on the stream. God, that looks really cute. Oh my God. I love this. I love this. I love this little guy. I love him. This, honestly, this is starting to contend with one of my favorite patterns. Yoshi! There's my Yoshi Valkyrie. Here, I'll do a, I'll do a spring ha for you. Spring ha! Ooh, not high enough. Spring ha! No. Mom. Mom. That's Yoshi jumping. Oh, did I see the Mario movie yet? Heck yes, I saw the Mario movie and I absolutely loved it. My only criticism of the movie is that not enough Yoshi. Are you kidding me? I know you're like saving it for like the second. Wait, one, two, three, four, five. Look there. I know they're saving saving it for like the second movie or whatever, but come on, dude. Like Yoshi, Yoshi's my favorite. I can't believe there was like barely any Yoshi in that movie. Such a bummer. I love Yoshi. Um, but. I did like that movie quite a lot. It was really fun. And I got to see it with my nephew and niece. Uh, so I got to see it with like a bunch of kids. It was really, really fun. <laughs> I, I really liked watching the movie with children because you know, it was like four children. So I don't know, it's just kind of fun. Yes, the coffee is definitely hitting for sure. You're definitely, you're definitely correct. What is my favorite animal? Um, it used to be a wallaby. I used to love wallabies. I still do, obviously. I mean, how do you, how do you fall out of love with wallabies? I mean, those things are cute as heck. But now my favorite, oh gosh, Cosmo, yes. I'll continue with Stitch. Let me finish this story. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, I really like lemurs. I think lemurs are probably my, my favorite, uh, my favorite animal. I just love them. All kinds of lemurs. Specifically, I really like red ruffed lemurs because they look so fuzzy and I just want to pet them so much. So yeah, that's probably my favorite. Okay, back to, to stitched talk for Cosmo. Um, okay, where was I? I was talking about stitched. Um, I, oh my gosh. Ugh. I'm never gonna be able to finish talking about stitch because it keeps distracted by things like this adorable cat. Look at this thing. What? 
I should have named him. I should have named Jimbo Yoshi. Um, okay. So, I was talking about Stitched. I was talking about the story mode. I added um, things like... Okay, so this is how it works, basically. All the different characters in Stitched, my tabletop game that I made, have different kinds of stats. You know, we got, like, goblins who have, like, one strength and two intelligence and two speed. Um, orcs that have two strength and one intelligence and uh, two speed. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, in the role-playing version of the game that I've been working on, it basically makes it so that when you are doing things in the game, like let's say you see a, a big cavern and you need to jump over the cavern, you roll your characters a stat that works with that character, with what that character is trying to do. So for example, let's say you're trying to move a boulder. In, in the game and, and like I'm the dungeon master or the game master or whatever and I'm like okay you come up to a big rock that's covering up a hole you need to move that rock and one of the characters says okay I go and I try to shove the rock out of the way that's when I go uh, as the dungeon master all right roll your character's strength because that's using your strength to move this boulder out of the way so you roll your character's strength let's say you're an orc so you roll your strength is two which means you roll two dice and your um how well you do at a specific task like like roll uh rolling a rock rock out of the way is based on what your highest dice tells so let's say you roll two dice you roll a two and a four your highest dice was a four so that is your uh your hit number basically so if you roll a four i say okay if it's a four that means it's a success, but it's not like a complete success. What does that mean? That means basically like in D&D, &D, you have things like <clears throat> mixed success and failures and success. So like a one and a two on a six-sided dice is really low. So that's going to be a failure. If you roll a one, it's like a complete failure. Nothing works at all. You roll a two, it what happens doesn't work, but it doesn't work. It's not that bad. If you roll a three... It's up to me. Maybe it works. Maybe it doesn't work. Uh, it depends on what you're doing and like the situation at hand. If you roll a four, it's a mixed success, which means that it works, but it doesn't work exactly how you were trying to get it to do. Um, if you roll a five, it's a success. And if you roll a six, it's a complete success. It works exactly the way you were planning on having it work. Now, this means that as you play this game, um, the higher your stat is, the more dice you have to roll with, and the higher the chance is that you're successful on certain things. It's actually a really cool system that works shockingly well. Uh, I do need to like test it out a lot more, but it does work really, really well for uh, what I've been you know, making it for. Um, and yeah, I also added things like there's a leveling up system in it. So like as you're playing the game, you know, we, we play a game, you end up at this certain place where you have to fight a, let's say you have to fight a dragon or whatever, and you beat the dragon, um, you get a certain amount of experience points based on what you did in the game. And if you get enough experience points, your character levels up. And every time a character levels up, they have different stats depending on the kind of character you are. So if you're an orc and you level up to level two, maybe you gain plus one to your strength, or maybe you gain plus two HP, or you know whatever. Um, it's really really cool. I, I'm I'm actually really proud of this system that I built for it. Uh, I don't know. There's certain things that I need to uh, make like like tweak and make work better um because at the time being like it's better to have a stronger character you know like having an orc means that you're going to roll higher than if you have a goblin but another part of this game that is kind of cool uh that differentiates it from things like dungeons and dragons and stuff other than the simplicity like obviously this this is a much more simplified version of playing a role-playing game but the other way that it makes it different is that um, 
in this game, death is not permanent. So if your character dies, uh, just like how in Stitched you can use money to bring back characters from life, there's things in this game called, <laughs> they're called Larg Shards, which is a weird word for it, but they're basically little puzzle pieces. They're technically they're called the full name for them is Shards of the Reflection of Larg. And Larg is one of the gods in, in the Stitched world. I have like a whole lore doc that I've been creating to talk about like, you know, who the gods are and whatever. Super nerdy. Super nerdy stuff. Anyhow, um, these puzzle pieces basically make it so that if you have, if you're holding one of the puzzle pieces when your character dies, their soul is put into like basically the ether and you can uh one of your teammates can spend gold to bring your character back to life so your death is never like a permanent thing in this game but if you get brought back to life all that character's experience points go away and you have to start from scratch so there's still like a um a negative effect to dying but it's not like the end of the world and then the other big thing with this game that I'm that I'd like to make work is that all the um hold on mosquito boom first try dead as a doorknob sorry little mosquito but also get out of here this ain't your house this is my house mr mesquite trying to give me malaria not in my house um uh, the other big thing about this Stitch story mode, that's what I'm calling it right now, is Stitch story mode, is that the, um, the, you can play with multiple characters. So, so on your turn, let me get a dice real quick. I'm sorry, uh, by the way. If you're not really into this, I'm super sorry that I'm going into extreme detail about this silly game that I designed, but I, I, you know, Cosmo asked and I like talking about it a lot. So in the game, uh, when you're playing the story mode, you roll a six out of dice to determine like how many things you can do on your turn. Uh, and if you have one character, um, you use all those actions on that one character. But if you have multiple characters, you can use those actions split up between your characters so like let's say you roll a dice and you roll a six a six means that you get five actions on your turn if you roll a one and a two you have three actions a three and a four you get four actions and a five and a six you get five actions so that means you can do five things on your turn uh being like okay i want to move around the board with some of my actions like i want to use one movement one of my actions to move a character here now i have four actions to use left blah 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 well, in the Stitch Story mode, you have multiple characters. You can, you don't have to, you can just have one character if you want, but you can have multiple characters that you meet during the game that you can play in the game. So it'd be like, it's it's essentially like playing Dungeons and Dragons, but you have like multiple side characters that you can also play with. Um, that's, that's the kind of idea on how I'm making it so it works like spread out throughout multiple, or like, you know, just making it a little bit more fun, a little bit different. Um, and I really like it. I, I, I think it's just such a fun, different idea where you could be like, okay, like today, you know, we're going on a certain challenge to go to fight a dragon, let's say. And you know you're going to go fight a dragon. Well, maybe you want to go into that battle with someone with a little bit more strength rather than your smart boy. And in which case you'd be like, okay, I'm going to bring along, you know, my ogre to that battle. Um, the other really cool thing about this, uh, Stitch story mode is that the way I'm going to try to design it is that anything that happens to your character can happen to the piece itself. So like, let's say you have like an orc and you go into a battle against a, an ogre and your orc wins the battle, but the ogre in the process of fighting the orc cuts off your orc's arm because he gets like a really good hit if that happens <laughs> this the idea i really like the idea of taking um <laughs> you should know what you're funny uh i like the idea 
Oh, interesting, Roasted Dolphin. Can you email me about that? I'll, I'll get that fixed. Uh, Roasted Dolphin, email me at louis at clubcrochet.com and I'll try to get that fixed. Uh, that's clearly a mistake that I'd like to fix on the website. Uh, they say that the Mario things does, doesn't work. Um, anyhow, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Um, I like the idea a lot of in Stitch, like if something bad happens to your character, it actually can happen to your piece. So like you get in a fight with an ogre, your character loses an arm. I'm going to cut the arm off of your actual piece. <laughs> I just think that's such a funny idea to have like, like actual repercussions to what happens in your character. Like, you know, like let's say this is your dwarf and we fight and your character gets his arm cut. Like I actively cut your character's arm off and now your piece is missing, a straight up missing an arm. And then you have to go back into town, find the local um, tailor, which is, which is basically like the healer in town. And then you have to like pay that healer to get that arm sewn back on. And then I'll actively in real life sew your character's arm back on. Ain't nothing but a heartache. Anyhow, that's my stitch spiel. Sorry for taking up so much time talking about that, but obviously it makes me very excited. So yeah, sorry, not sorry. Let me know if you have any other questions about things that I'm extremely passionate about. Uh, someone asked if I play S Switch Online. I do play Switch Online, I think. I think that's what someone was asking. Noah is, Noah is quoting, uh, I, we all thought Noah was quoting the lyrics to a song. But really Noah is quoting a line from the show, uh, uh, hold on, don't tell me. The show, the show is called, the show is called Brooklyn Nine-Nine, right? Yes, I was right. <laughs> I knew it. Yes, of course I watched Brooklyn Nine-Nine. That's a great show. Um, yes, it is not a raccoon in the background. That is a black-footed ferret, which is one of the patterns from our crochet alongs. Uh, this one's actually made by Lemon Yarn Creations, who's the artist that made this pattern. It's one of our endangered creatures for our World Wildlife Fund razor patterns, uh, which is what this pattern is actually too. It's funny how I do my like craziest designs during these fundraiser things, not like for my other, I don't know. Yeah, um, I think I can give you, I'll say, I don't usually play online with a lot of people. I pretty much just play, um, I pretty much just play Super Smash Brothers right now. Uh, I did just get Advanced Wars. Uh, which I really like, but pretty much the only game I play online is is Super Smash Brothers. Sometimes me and Jules play Mario Kart, but oh my gosh, Amaze Feet is catching up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two. Perfect. Um, I need to speed up here. Or Amaze Feet is gonna make two tortoises in the time that I make one because I get so distracted. Okay, so that's gonna be slip stitch one, slip stitch two. Oh, and I'm gonna cut this end off. And then we go, wait, oopsies, no wait. Slip stitch one, sl slip stitch two, and then do the repeat of slip stitch one, chain one, half double crochet one, and then half double crochet one, chain one, slip stitch one. Perfect. Two, three. Crochet one, 
chain one, slip stitch one. Cool. Three. Pretty good, pretty good. All right, what about Animal Crossing? I have played Animal Crossing. Um, I used to play it more, but I kind of stopped playing it. Uh, Jules started to play it a lot, uh, like a lot, lot, like 2,000 hours a lot um, <laughs> during the pandemic, uh, but she stopped playing a while back. And then, um, but yeah, I've, I've got like an uncomfortable amount of hours spent on Super Smash Brothers. Uh, I guarantee you, AJ, I mean, you can fight me in Super Smash Brothers if you want, you will not win. I guarantee you, you will not beat me in Super Smash Brothers as long as you let me play Yoshi, because Yoshi is my main character, and I'm very, very good. I, I, I think, yeah, I'm very good with that specific character. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think, yeah, you definitely did, Hannah, definitely. Yeah, I, I think I showed. Uh, Jules's dream code a long time ago. Uh, I don't know if we know it anymore, but it's out there somewhere. Do I like watching the anime Naruto? I've actually never seen Naruto. I do like anime, um, but I've never seen Naruto. I don't know why. Fight me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Fight me, I dare you. I da double dog dare you. And I'm gonna poop you right off the edge. That's my specialty with Yoshi. I like to lick. The, the, Yoshi in Super Smash Brothers has a special move where you lick them and you turn them into an egg. And my specialty in Super Smash Brothers, I'm really, really good at licking people, pooping them right off the edge. And then right when they pop out of the egg to try to make it back to the stage, I lick them again and poop them out again and let them fall to their, to their death. It's, uh, it's very dirty. It's a, it's a dirty move, and I love it. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I have no idea where that, where that friend or where that code would be. By the way, Hannah, sorry. If I knew, I, w I would tell you, but I don't know. I don't. I don't remember what live stream we talked about it or anything like that. <laughs> the wholesome people always choose Yoshi. I do think, I actually do think there's some kind of truth about that. There's something like, all the people that I know that use Yoshi as their main character in in uh, Super Smash Brothers are really, really nice. <laughs> there's one person, uh... yeah, it, it, yeah, that's just funny. I... Um, yeah, the, so the animes that I like, um, I really like, uh, I liked Attack on Titan. Um, uh, let's see, what other ones? Oh, I love, I love, um, uh, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Good stuff there. If you've never seen that, if you want to get into anime or you just want to watch a good show, check out Full Metal, Full Metal, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. A very very good show hey yeah yeah listen to Samantha hit that little thumbs up icon oh and um while I'm making this top shell let's see what time is it yeah okay I think we're gonna have to do a hat right give me let's do suggestions for hats I just started a Q&A. Oh, poor Jimbo's awake. He's moved. He's moved on. Um, I just started a Q&A where you can at, you can uh, respond and let me know what kind of hat you'd like me to make for the tortoise. And I'm gonna choose my four favorites, uh, and then we'll do a vote on that to vote on which kind of hat to make. Five. And we're gonna do the same kind of thing for choosing a name later on, also. Yeah, you know what, Hannah? That's funny you say that. I was thinking that exact same thing. I was like, also, I really like Avatar. <laughs> but it's not really an anime. It's kind of just like a cartoon with an anime kind of vibe to it, I guess. Um, but I had the exact same thought, Hannah. 
exact same thought. Oh, dude, Celeste, thank you. That's really, honestly, Celeste, that means a lot to me. That that really means a lot to me. Like, comments like that are, are legitimately what keep me going, especially in these live streams. Like, it just means a lot. Thank you for, thank you for saying that. Amazefeed is trying to choose the most complicated hat possible so that they can try to catch up to me in the crochet. That's their, that's their strategy there. I see through, I see through your strat. Can I make a ring for your finger to hold tension on your yarn? Yeah, pe sometimes people actually have like physical rings that they wear that ha that they can like put the yarn onto. Uh, some people do this with their piece. They like go around their back pinky finger to keep tension. Um, I actually usually just like, I usually just like hold the yarn like this with my five, three fingers, but it does make it a little bit easier to go around your pinky like that to give you a little bit more of tension. Um, yeah, either way, either way works. This just feels a little bit awkward for me because I don't usually do it like this, but it totally works. Oh, thanks, Samantha. Oh, a fez. Interesting. Yeah, we can make a fez work. What do you think about that, Jimbo? Do you like a fez idea? No. Oh, okay. Jimbo is not a big fan of the fez. I like it, though. Don't listen to him, AJ. Oh, what? Oh. Guys, did you guys know that Jimbo's awake? Jimbo's woken up from his nap, and he wants everybody to know. Tell everybody. Go on, scream to the world about how you are awake. Yeah. Yeah. What? Oh. Wow, wow, wow. So noisy. Who are you talking to? What are you talking about? What are you talking to him about? Yeah. 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 Oh, by the way, check out my shirt. I'm wearing a Jimbo shirt. Isn't that cute? Hey, 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 no, 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 we're not, we're not biting my yarn. We're not doing that. You have a secret agent here, Amaze Feed. You got, did you pay Jimbo to be your secret agent of chaos? Because it sure seems like it. He's taking my yarn. Stop. I can't crochet while I hold you. You know that? Do you want to purr in the mic? Turn the mic. Yeah, good job. You're so talented. Tell him. Hill Simp wants to wants to know more about you. Tell him your tell them your opinions on new Oh, that was my face. Why did you bite me in the chin? That was not nice. You're out of here, bub. It hurt. Check this out. See this? Guess guess what that's from? That's from Jimbo this morning, biting me in the wrist. Because he wants to kill me! Okay, now he's playing with my feet. Ow! Now he bit me in the feet. What is your problem, dude? He's very bitey right now. Usually that means he wants to play, which is not good. I don't know how to get that out of his system. I've, honest to God, I've tried my entire time of owning Jimbo. We've had Jimbo for like seven years six years five years an amount of time and he's always been a biter and i don't know how to get it out of him and it worries me so much because one day i want to have kids and if i have a baby and he bites my baby i'm gonna murder him <laughs> and i don't want that to happen i don't know how to get him see zoe says don't be naughty or she's not gonna buy a jimbo pin you hear that now you're affecting my me economically, Jimbo. You need to be nice. Your your meanness is is hurting more than just my feet. He doesn't care. Um, how old is Jimbo? I think he's like seven. I think he's seven. We got him when he was like one and a half. 
Yeah, literally woke up and chose violence. Exactly. Um, okay. The, the amount of times where he wakes up and chooses violence is too damn high. Um, hi, cat. How are you? How are you doing? Uh, can you ask more questions? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Ask me, ask me as many questions as you like. No promises that I'll know the right answers, but I definitely can. Have I tried crying out loud like a cat when he bites me? Yes, I've tried everything. I've tried punishing him. I've tried putting him in the other room. I've tried biting him back. I've tried meowing at him. Nothing stops this cat. He's unstoppable. Ew, my hand right now. Look at this. Can you see how the color of the yarn is different? Because it's covered in cat spit. Gross. We're going to use it anyhow, but gross. It's so much harder to crochet with. Ew. Ew. Look at it. You can, can you see the stitch? That's a cat slobber stitch. That's disgusting. Gross, gross, gross. You're new! Oh, welcome, cat! Thank you for joining! Hey, if you like what's going on here, you should like this video and subscribe. We do live streams like this every single week, and I've got a whole bunch of crochet patterns that I come out with all the time. And uh, yeah, they'll just be cool. You should like this video and subscribe. If this video gets 150 likes, we're gonna do a giveaway next live stream too. Don't, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done with your slobber. I'm done with it. I don't need you to slobber all over everything. You don't see the question and answer poll. Hmm. It's not a poll. It's like you go in there and you can like ask things. Let's see. People have suggested a newspaper boy hat, a pinwheel hat, a bowler hat, a Robin Hood. Ooh, that's a good one. A flower hat, a pink bow, skull cap, frog hat, dog hat, cowboy hat, top hat. All great suggestions. Okay, Jimbo, my fuzzy boy. Love you. I'm going to set you down now and you're gonna leave us alone and not bite me in the face. Why do you do this to me? Why do you do things like that to the people that you love? Why? Here. I put him in a spot and I gave him his toy. Maybe that'll stop him for like half a second. Anybody else excited to go see uh, the new Guardians of the Galaxy movie this week? I'm going to see that with my daddy on Friday. I'm very excited. Cat, of course Cat's still here. Cat wants to hang out with the cool kids. So Cat's going to stick around, you know? Because we're all cool kids. Atlas, don't question the coolness of yourself. You are a cool kid, and you deserve to be treated as such. I believe in you, Atlas. Do I have an affordable Amigurumi display suggestion? Interesting question. Wow, that's a very unique one, Hannah. Hannah says that they usually use a wooden shelf, but they're double booked for markets this June. Ooh, congratulations. Um, okay, an affordable Amigurumi. I'll tell you what I do. Now this is borderline maybe not the most legal of advice but it is the cheapest way to get the coolest looking display at your uh at your booth what i've done in the past again i don't don't suggest this 
go to Target, buy a bookshelf, do your event, return the bookshelf. Free, free display. Best option actually is Costco. They are the easiest ones to return things to. Now, if someone messes with your display and like makes it messy or whatever, you're not gonna be able to return it. So that is the, you know, the trade-off. It might not work basically, but I have done that in the past and it worked for me. I've done it a few times and it's worked for me. Oh my gosh, Jimbo needs a cat wheel. Yeah, he does. He needs a friend. He needs a cat friend that wants to play with him. Phoebe does not like playing with Jimbo. I wonder why. It's like he bites you in the face or something. <laughs> but yeah. That's my that's my low-key suggestion for you, Hannah. Where is my favorite What is my favorite place in Quebec? I've never been to Quebec, so I don't know. My favorite place that I have been to in Canada is e probably uh, Vancouver or uh, Ardna Merkin, because those are the only two places I've been to. I really want to see Quebec, and I really want to see um, uh, Toronto really bad. Th those two places I really want to go check out, but I haven't had a chance yet. Yep. Exactly. Retail hacking. That's what it is. It's a good move, honestly. Hey, Amaze Feed, now that you've finished this pattern, and, and also anybody else who is crocheting this pattern. Oh my god, look at this cat cam. Anybody else who's crocheting this pattern, what do you think is the difficulty level for this pattern? Um, I suggested it was medium to hard level, somewhere around there. But honestly, I don't like, I have a hard time. I personally have a difficult time like finding what the difficulty rating should be for patterns because, you know, I, I designed it. So what's your opinion on that? I'd love, I'd love to know any, any opinions on what you think the difficulty level was for this pattern. If you finished it, go a long way. So let me know. One, two, back loop only. Ah, I think I found a mistake. Oh no, no, I didn't. I didn't. I can't believe I don't have more mistakes in this pattern because I did it so fast. And then single crochet too. Medium, intermediate. Okay, cool. So you don't think this is an advanced pattern. That's the important thing that I wanted to distinguish because Megan was looking at it. Uh, she's she's one of our web designers that helps put everything onto the website. And she was like, this might be an advanced pattern. But I was like, ah, maybe it could be. Could be. Yeah, I will we'll take a vote on the hat after I finish up uh, the bottom shell or the top shell here uh, and then we'll vote on the hat while I'm sewing everything together and then we'll make the hat because we have quite a long time to sew everything together so yeah yeah unfortunately that takes up a shocking amount of time mostly because of the legs Two, one, two, one, two. Cool. Where do you go to make suggestions for the hat? There should be a blue bar at the top of the chat. Click that and that's where you can suggest ideas for the hat. Cat. That's where you can suggest ideas for the hat, cat. Ooh, okay, good to know. Noah, if I make it to Quebec, I'll let you know.
Oops, that wasn't the right thing to do. Let's try that again. Front loop only, single crochet one, slip stitch one into both loops, work over, slip stitch two, one, two, slip stitch one, front loop only, single crochet. All right, cool. And then I'll just repeat that all the way around. This round is a little complicated though. <gasps> I knew there was somewhere. Cool, thank you for letting me know, Cooper. I will go in there and fix that after this live stream. Um, yeah, I was like, I knew that exact mistake was somewhere because when I was crocheting it on the video, I noticed it and I, and I was like, okay, Lou, make a mental note of this. You need to fix it. But I didn't catch that. Thank you for letting me know, Cooper. I will fix that ASAP. This is why I need to test my patterns before releasing them more often. But this pattern was so, I had to just finish it so fast that I just did not have time to test it out. I wish I did though. I honestly, my procrastination for this pattern really was a bad idea. There's nothing worse than procrastinating for this, like an, a harder pattern. I would absolutely love to talk crochet. What is your, I was your anonymous donation. Oh, oh, really? Marilise, that's a mistake. Um, okay, hold on. That That's definitely a mistake. You should have gotten it. To, you should have been able to download it directly. Can you email me, Mar Marilise? Uh, it's louis at clubcrochet.com and I'll just send you directly the PDF for your donation. Thank you for letting me know too. I'll fix that so that if anybody else donates, um, it won't mess up in the future. Uh, I'll fix that after this live stream. Totally, total, turtly my bad. Tortoisely my bad. Have I always made my own patterns? Uh. Um, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, I think when I first learned to crochet, I learned how to do like the single crochet in the round. Uh, and I think I used a pattern for an octopus. And then after that, I just made my own patterns like right away. I was like, okay, well, what happens if I do a yarn over before I go into the stitch? And I was like, oh, that's turns out that's a half double crochet. I would just like make things up. Um, but yes, the answer is yes. I pretty much always have been making my own patterns uh, since I started crocheting. Okay, a little slip stitch here. And now we have all of the different parts crocheted. Now this one, we need a long end. And I usually do this. We'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, that. We need a long end here because we're gonna use this to sew on. Um, and we'll pull it through. And we'll do a hidden end. Okay, we're gonna vote on a hat though while I'm doing this. You want me to name after you, Noah? Maybe. We're gonna we're gonna do name suggestions in a sec too. Um, but let's start by choosing four favorite names and voting on it. I think we're gonna go. Bowler hat, because duh. Um, cowboy, I like the cowboy hat. Um, oh, what are those? Uh, the, the pinwheel.
four. Okay, name suggestions are out there. Go ahead and give me a name suggestion as we sew together. Um, actually, we're gonna sew together the body first. I almost pulled our stitch markers out like a doofus. You know what I'm voting for. I have strong suggestions about tortoises hats. We have a, uh, we actually have a turkey pattern, Samantha, so I probably won't be doing another turkey, but if you look up turkey on the website, if you go to the browse section of the site and look it up, um, there are, uh, there are, there's a turkey hat. Uh, can I describe a pinwheel hat? Yeah, it's like basically like a, like a, like a baseball cap, but it's got different colors. It's got like a rainbow of colors around and then like a little thing at the top that spins around like a like a propeller at the top of the hat that's what a pinwheel hat is pretty good so i'm starting by stuffing all these legs up with more stuffing than i really need slug <laughs> Oh, Orchestra team. Oh my gosh, that's funny. Yeah, like a yeah, like a little helicopter hat, exactly. Cowboy hat is winning though. Currently we're on a cowboy hat stint. I don't know if I remember the pattern for a cowboy hat, but I'm sure I can remake it. I did a cowboy hat once for our, um, for one of our, uh, for a raptor. I think in our raptor crochet along, I did a cowboy hat. And I'm sure I explained it as I was doing it, but I do not remember that pattern at all. So I'll have to just make it up on the go. I'm pretty sure I can do it though. I, I've made a few cowboy hats in the past. Pretty good. Last one. Yes, you can't come up with a name until the hat issue is resolved. You're absolutely right. Um, the hat issue will be resolved either when I'm done sewing the legs on or when it reaches, uh, let's say when it reaches 30 votes. So we're only at 23 votes right now. But we're almost there. We can make two hats and then have a shoot off. <laughs> That's funny. Becky. Oh, good, Becky. Thanks for joining. Hope you're having a great day. Noah. I might put your name in the vote. Depends on what names people suggest. We're going to be doing a name suggestion after the hat situation. But in the meantime, we are going to be sewing on some leggies. Twenty six votes, four more votes. Close game, close, close voting here, guys. Close voting. We want around that stitch. So we go one here, one here. Here. Is that correct? 
think so. One, boom. Oh wait, is that right? That'll be sewn on like this. Uh, that might make his leg backwards a little bit. You know, we're gonna go one stitch different. Start, start here. Yeah, we'll start here and then go out. Okay. Cowboy Marcus. Good, good name. Marcus is a good turtley name. Oh, I never finished talking about my turtle, my tortoise that I had. So I had a tortoise named speedy and for the longest time oh shoot i pulled that stitch out it's right here pretty sure i'm gonna go ahead and just you know what we're just gonna go ahead and put in the next foot there so i don't lose actually how should i do this just put this in there um So I had a tortoise named Speedy. Do I know what turtle is in French? I don't actually. Je ne sais pas. What is it? What is it, Miss Quebec or Mr. Quebec? Um, so I had a tortoise named Speedy and for the longest time I thought Speedy was a girl. I, but then one day I woke up in the middle of the night and Speedy was having relations. That's what we're going to say. The nice way to say it with a rock in their enclosure. And that's when I realized that Speedy, whew, Speedy was not a girl. <laughs> it was very funny. If you ever have, if you have, have you ever heard a turtle having relations with the rock before? Cause it sounds hilarious. It sounds like, Very weird. What's a boiler hat? One, two, three. Perfect. Oh, <laughs> I'm voting bo bowler hat personally. That's my bow. Because I believe in, in the law. And the law states clearly in the Constitution, it clearly says tortoises require bowler hats at all times. It's a law. I don't know what to tell you guys, okay? I studied turtle law. And it, it's, you know, it, there was, I took a few classes on tortoise law, obviously. Um, so that's how I know about this tortoise law. What hat are we making? There's still one more vote to take. One more vote. So I don't know yet. I do not know. Did they take that out of the Constitution? Was that an, an amendment to the Constitution that they took out the tortoise rules? Man, I didn't even know that. just simple tortoise law guys you just if you don't know tortoise law then like what are you even doing in this country <gasps> uh oh cat wants a revote too bad cat too bad you made a mistake a terrible terrible mistake has been made and you know what cat we're never gonna forgive you You want another vote between the two winning votes. Oh, because it is tied. You're right. It is tied. But there's one more vote to, to get. I remember Franklin. 
Oh no, 30 votes have been cast, but it wasn't for one of the two of the winning. You're right, we need to do another vote. We need to do another vote. Okay. Okay. Start a poll. We got bowler versus cowboy. Boom. Revote. Same rules. Go into 30 or until I finish sewing on all of our gams. This is a fun song. You know what I get to start doing this week, by the way, guys? I'm really excited. I get to start all the stuff for season two of, of my seasonal kits. I'm very, very excited. Uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, we're doing these new seasonal crochet kits now. It's like it's like my new, my new thing. We're doing seasonal crochet kits and next season is all themed around under the sea. And so I get to start working on those patterns now, now that photosynthesis is pretty much good to go. And I'm really, really excited to see what I make. Um, obviously the patterns are mostly uh, set in stone, but there's a few of them that I keep like open-ended because I don't know what I want to make just yet. And so I'm excited to see what I come up with. Obviously they're all gonna be ocean themed, so we're gonna be doing fishes and fishies and fishoos. But yeah. The one that I want to design first though is a um a uh what's it called? Oh whales. I'm doing a bunch of customizable whales which I've been meaning to come out with for a long time, so I'm really excited. One, two, three, four, boom. One. It's gonna be too high up, isn't it? Eh, whatever. Um, but yeah, I'm very excited about that. One. One, two, three. Yeah, we're good, we're good. Uh, so the whale, the customizable whale pattern, it's going to be like, here's how to make a classic whale, here's how to make a killer whale, a beluga whale, a dolphin, and a um, dolphin and a narwhal. That's those are the patterns I'm going to do, and they're all going to be like really tiny, super simple to make whales. And then I'm going to do uh, customizations on that throughout the season, I think, to make things like seals using like pretty much the same pattern to make seals, to make, um, was it, there was another kind of whale. Killer whale, blah, blah, blah. What was it? Oh, sharks, that's what it was. Things like that. Space whale. Yes, let's make a wind fish. Oh my God, that'd be so fun. That would actually be a lot of fun. We're getting some strong opinions on hats here. This is probably why um, amendment, uh, what, what, what amendment of the constitution would be the tortoise hat thing? <laughs> He's a dandy bowler. Ooh, we got bowler winning. Except there's still more to vote for. Manta Ray, that's right. Uh, so I think that, Sir, so Sir Pearl Gray is gonna do a pattern for the, um, the kit. And I think he's gonna do a Manta Ray. Um, we're also doing Angie the Anglerfish, which is also one of his patterns. But uh, 
we made an agreement, me and Philip, that he'd do a pattern for all of the different um, collaborations. Dang it, I took that out and that was stupid of me. I think it's this one though. I'm gonna go with this one. Okay, boom. That should be fine. Let's let's put the bottom of the shell on to just kind of guide us. Yeah, that looks that looks right. Okay. Hey, uh, Amaze Feed, how we doing? You finished the legs? You finished the head? Where are we at? I have a feeling you're catching up pretty fast because I have been ultra uber distracted. Down a stitch first? Maybe we do. Okay. Chill song is chill. Alright, so we got one right here. Maze feet is on the head. You you have like a, a serious chance here, a maze feed, to finish two tortai. Tortati? Tortities. Tortles. Tortle tortellinis. That's what it is, right? Pretty sure that's what it is. You have the chance to make two tortellinis before I finish one. That's crazy. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Perfect. Hey, you know, don't hate the, don't hate the hat, hate the game. <laughs> Bowler cap for a turtle, for a cat. Maybe. Let's see, we got three more votes to do. It's anyone's game right now, guys. Oh no, I broke the yarn. Okay, whatever, we have enough to double knot too. I was pulling way too hard, just wasn't even thinking. Oh, that's annoying. Whatever, it'll be fine. It'll be fine, right? Oh, I just broke it worse. Shoot. Oh, I'm dropping things. The stress is getting to me. We're gonna have to hide this end in. shouldn't come undone wish I didn't do that but that's all right I think we I think we have dodged a bullet <laughs> oh my god a turtle with a bowler hat for a shell that's actually a really really good idea Julie I love that idea all right this one's gonna go here this time I'm gonna make it come out to the side mess that up again. <laughs> yep, 
Yeah, I agree. I think a beanie would be super duper cute. It's just not winter. You know, this is a, this is a sophisticated turtle here. Turtles. You don't. You just don't understand the sophistication of a tortoise, Becky. And I, I, I don't know what to do about that. <laughs> don't pet Jimbo. Well, don't tell me what not to do. Now that's all I want to do, man. Why you do that to me? Ooh, Rosie, good questions. Light Heroes, hello, how are you doing? How is your day going? Um, Hannah, are we gonna be streaming next week? Yes, same time, same place. Uh, actually, let me show you where you can go on the website. Oopsies, I did the wrong stitch here. On the website, I have it set up so you can see when the next live streams are on the home page. So if you go to clubcrochet.com and you log in, you'll be redirected to the home page. And on that home page is, um, if you scroll down, is a calendar. Um, I'm gonna try to make it more obvious. And I also wanna start putting it on screen during the beginning of the live stream saying like, you know, this is the next live stream or whatever. You know how I talk. This is the next this, that, and the other thing. You get it. You get it. One, two, three. Having a hard time finding which stitch to work with here. This needs to be more ballet focused. That's probably gonna be fine. All right. Whoa, my brain just like legit. I don't even remember what just happened the past few seconds. I was just on, I was in another universe. I was in, I was on Andromeda. I was in the Andromeda galaxy. Fighting porcupine looking things. I don't know what I was, I don't know what I'm talking about. Anyhow, you're going to jail, Becky. You're on the way. You're going straight to jail. Um, okay. Let's keep on going. One, two, three, four. So we got one, two. Okay, I think it's like this. I think this last leg that I'm sewing on here is a little bit wonky, but. I have already made my bed and now I have to sleep in it. Logo's covering up the cat cam. Boo. That's dumb. That's a dumb thing. I'm sorry. You should learn to crochet. 
Uh, you're probably not the only one here that doesn't know how to crochet. There's a few people in this that don't know how to crochet, I'm pretty sure. But you should totally learn how. It's really, really fun. It's like the legitimately the best art in the world. Duh. In the world. You heard it here first, folks. <laughs> I don't know if you knew that I had these strong opinions about crochet, but I do. But I do. One. And two. Okay. Legs are sewn on, which means hat vote. What did we choose? Let's get this stuff in there. Uh, actually, let me add the head real quick too. But that that's only gonna take me a second. Look at how cute this naked turtle is. Wow, much naked. Okay, head. go once it's in there you gotta squish it so it doesn't come apart and then da, 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 da. naked turtle naked turtle naked turtle this leg looks a lot closer than that leg but whatever naked turtle is naked all right we're gonna go ahead and end the poll and start the poll for, ooh, bowler hat, nice. Okay, now we wanna start a Q&A. What should we name our bowler hat wearing tortoise? Okay, name our tortoise in the chat. I'm gonna choose my five, Four favorites, and we're going to vote on it uh, once we start making the hat. In the meantime, while you guys are voting on that, I'm going to sew on the shells. I'm going to have a shell of a time. Very vulnerable. Very vulnerable. At least give it a blanket. Okay. Do we got a little blanket for him? I don't have a blanket. Sorry, he's just gonna have to be cold for a second. Okay. Noah, Noah, Noah. <laughs> put the name in there. Oh, Noah has put their name in there. I don't see a Marcus yet though. Charlie, you got you should suggest markets in the name suggestions so I don't forget. All right. Now this is kind of a bit of a laborious laborious part of the pattern, but you know what? It's not too bad. It ain't that bad. This goes on down here, like this. And then this one gets sewn to there, like this. And that would be how the tortoise shell goes. The tortoise shell though, it's really crazy. I, I did like some really wild design stuff for this. You'll see, you'll see, oopsies. You'll see what I mean. First, we gotta get it started. Okay. All right. Up. Let's 
Charlie screams in the name of Mark. <laughs> Tony's not bad. I'll tell you what, Tony the tortoise with a bowler, that's a very bowler hat name for a tortoise. down to here. We're going to be doing a giveaway next live stream, I think. It depends how many likes this video gets. Um, if this video gets... If this video gets uh, 150 likes, we will be doing a live stream next giveaway. And I don't know how many likes we have right now. Anybody want to let me know? But we're aiming for one... I'm sorry, we're aiming for, yeah, 150. 150 likes is our goal. See, so check this out. Right? Okay. Right? There. Wait. There. Okay, so check this out. So what we're doing as we go through this is we're also, while we sew on the bottom of the shell to the top of the shell, we're also creating like these like all the design on the back of the shell, which is just so cool. I'm just, I just think that's awesome. And so we go like around this bar to kind of bolster it a little bit. One, two, 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 three. See, so it kind of like fills in that a little bit. And then we start going and working our way across to the next part. Yeah, if this video gets a thousand likes, I will, um, I'll crochet an actual size giant tortoise on a live stream. <laughs> That's how confident I am that this will not hit a thousand likes. But if it does, you want to go crazy. This hits a thousand likes, I will crochet a giant, a life-sized giant tortoise. Should never I should never make those kind of bets <laughs> okay yeah Jimbo you awake uh oh the great beast has awoken from his great slumber yeah what's up bud you having a hard time your life is so hard buddy you have to like oops you have to like sleep First off, that's hard enough. Let's get his little tortoise shell on there like he's a little baby. Yeah, there's no more yarn for you to mess with. What color bowler hat should we make, by the way, guys? I'll just take general suggestions. We don't need to make it a big poll or anything. Do you have a suggestion, buddy? I'm kind of just thinking we do a black bowler hat because that just seems so classic. Jimbo. Um, yeah, what? Or a gray one? We could do gray. Do you, not, you don't like the gray idea either, Jimbo? What do you like? play well we can do that after this live stream if you want yeah after we go get dinner 134 we're almost hit that we've almost hit that giveaway already that's pretty great One. what hey oh my gosh she's on my leg stop 
We will hang out after this, I promise you. No. I know it's going extra long. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but people demanded a bowler hat for a tortoise. What am I supposed to do? I have to. Yes, I do. It's part of the job. He just doesn't get it. He just doesn't understand me. Ooh, red. Maroon actually doesn't sound bad. Sounds stylish. But I'll make an executive decision when we get to that point. Okay. Down to the next part of the shell. That tongue is so derpy, I love it. Extra derp. Yes, they we ordered a tortoise with extra derp and uh and a bow, bowler hat. He's at my feet, cat. <laughs> cat asks where you're at, Jimbo. Yeah, say, you're at my legs, meowing up, up, and saying, hey, play with me, hang out with me. What the heck are you even doing? You're talking to yourself. I'm not talking to myself. I'm talking about friends. And you gotta let me be who I am, man. Meow, meow, meow. Meow, meow, meow. That's all you say. That's all you do is complain. Oh, you didn't like that, did you? Well, there's. I'm sorry. Yeah. Ooh. Hey, he's trying to, he's trying to kick out my knee from behind me so I fall. What are you? What is this? What is this? You're like a bully. You are. Jimbo the bully. A lovable bully, an adorable bully, but a bully nonetheless. We're gonna send you to HR. Phoebe's gonna teach you how to be a nicer kitty. Phoebe is our very polite cat. We have some strong opinions on the name of this tortoise, by the way. We got Noah, we got Dave, we got Marcus, like people are into their name suggestions and you know i love that for you guys i think that's a i think it's great to have uh strong opinions about names for tortoises <laughs> noah's like quick do the name vote hurry my phone is gonna die I will get to the name vote ASAP Noah. Survive. Must survive. We have only a little bit more to go. I just want to finish sewing on the shell and then do the name vote as we're crocheting the hat. But we're almost there. We're almost there. You can make it. Your phone can do it. Turn your brightness down. Turn off Bluetooth. Just one more section here, and then we can start voting on the names and stuff. By the way, look an X, XC, extra cute.
Okay. All right, last little bit of a segment here. So in the shell on. How are we doing over there, Maze Feed? Think you're gonna make it? How How is Cooper doing? Last we checked in with Cooper, I think he was making the head. Probably far beyond that by this point, maybe. Or Cooper got distracted and that, you know, that happens too. He's just being cute. Oh my god, I love the tongue. Uh, let's put this in there. Okay. Ichi? Oopsies, I goofed that up. Oh boy, can I fix this? is getting threaded two I'm worried about it breaking three ah <laughs> cooper cooper's like i finished crocheting it but i'm gonna die i'll sew it together later i feel that my dude i feel that Well, it's okay, Becky. Thanks for joining in general, though. Okay, so now I need to work this backwards. So I'm going to go this way. Down. Tell you though, I've got the gifts for Christmas covered this year. I got so many of these tortoises. I got all these. I got all the things. All right, we're gonna come out through right here, double knot together, and then we're gonna choose some names for the pole and then start crocheting our bowler hat to finish this up. Hey, by the way, as we go, thanks for joining everybody. I know this has been an extra long live stream. I can't believe that we still have like 30 people here on the live stream. Thank you everybody for sticking in and staying and hanging out and keeping me company as I crochet an adorable tortoise named, I don't know. We're gonna vote, we're gonna vote, we're gonna vote, we're gonna vote. But let's take a look at our technically finished tortoise, even though he's hatless. Little legs, okay. Looks like a tortoise. Sounds like a tortoise. Must be a tortoise. What's that tail? Oh my gosh, it's so cute. And let's let's see our tortoise tuck into their shell and then our tortoise tuck out of their shell. Oh my gosh, that's so cute. All right, let's keep our tortoise right here and Hold on, buddy. I'm, we're we're going to choose a name real quick. Yeah, huh? Okay. Wow, good name. All right. We got Got to choose that as one of them. And Hold on, buddy. Hold on. Hold on. Jimbo, jeez. Stop. Okay. Name. 
names coming at you. Vote on a name. And let's get some yarn. Come on, we're going to choose a color for a bowler hat. We can do the maroon, black, gray. Come on, hold on, buddy, stop it. No. Keep headbutting, it's not cool. You need to relax. Hey. Gotta chill out, chill out, chill out. Gray, nah. Maroon, nah. We're gonna go with black. Yeah, I think a bowler hat, I think we'll do a black bowler hat. That's covered in cat fur. <laughs> Yeah, your cat fur. Tina's up late. Hey, Jimbo, chill. Chill O. Jimbo needs to chill O. And a maze feed needs to hurry up, oh, because I'm almost done, oh. Two. Don't bite me. Don't bite me. Goodness. The nibbliest cat in the world. I swear I feed him. I swear. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, we're going to go with that. We're going to need a pretty tiny cap. So I think we're only gonna go to nine stitches around. Yeah, Jimbo, why would you shed all over the yarn? Answer these people. He's laying literally on top of my foot right now. It's very cute. Oops. Is Jules, yes, Jules is away again. Jules went back to San Francisco for work slash to do a show. But she'll be back in like a week. Bummer, she, is, she did not want to go, I'll tell you right now. She was like, I don't want to go. Don't make me. And I was like, I'm not making you. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. I know. I miss her too. Thanks, Zoe. I can't wait for you to try it too. I hope you like it. Yeah. Okay, almost done here. Let's see how this looks. That's the beginning of the bowler hat. Nice and easy. Looks like it could be a baseball hat almost. But we're gonna go all the way around. You're under citizen's arrest, Jimbo. Becky says you're under citizen's arrest. It, <laughs> Jimbo says that he doesn't adhere to your laws. I don't really know that he can do that. He says he's a sovereign citizen. I don't know. 
I don't think he knows what that means. Are you a sovereign citizen, Jimbo? Do you know what that means? No, you don't know. You don't know nothing. You don't know nothing about nothing, bub. I think this is all I need to do. Have I fed Jimbo? Yes, I have. Yes, I have fed him. He is eaten. Jimbo demands a lot more than food. See you later, Samantha. Thanks for joining. Okay, almost done here. Looks like a little tiny hat to me. Oh my jeez. Oh my god. That's gonna be so cute. Oh my gourd. Oh my actual gourd. yarn try this out oh <laughs> bye Becky <laughs> All right. I don't think I need to sew this like on on, you know, like I don't need to worry about this being so sewn on that it never falls off, but I do want it sewn on a little bit. I think that's pretty good though for a bowler cap. Let's go ahead and give it a little bit more space, take off the Jimbo fuzz, and it's gonna go right there. Oh, come on. Are you kidding me? Tell me that's not the cutest hat ever. Don't tell me that. You'll break my heart. There. Okay, we're gonna use this end just to sew together a few stitches for the hat. Amaze feed, how we doing? I think you're about to lose. Ha 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 ha. You weren't able to make two, and the one time I was able to make one? <laughs> Pathetic. <laughs> that sounds like a, an anime villain. Pathetic. No, Amaze feed, congratulations on even, on being so fast at crocheting in general. I'm sorry that I gave you an unrealistic challenge. Yeah, now you guys are starting to see why the law is that every turtle has a bowler cap on. I mean, come on, it's pretty, it's pretty obvious. <laughs> Pretty obvious as to why that law is in effect. I mean, doy, it's cute AF. Okay, one more. So on that bit, that bit, and that bit. Adorable. It's adorable. It's a little crooked, but well, is it? No, I guess not. Oh my gosh, this freaking turtle is so cute. Hat's not going exactly the way I want it to go. 
There we go. And it squished down a little bit better. It looks better. He's had it. He has it like off to the side a little bit, which actually is kind of cute. All right, double knot these, and we're done. And we'll end the poll on our vote on our name. Say bye bye and play with Jimbo forever and call my brother back because I almost forgot about that. Hey, only only about an hour more than we were expecting. That's not too bad, right? It's not too bad. There we go. Okay, let's take a look at our finished tortoise whose name is... What? Of course. His name's Tony. Tony the tortoise, because of course his name's Tony. Who's in the, what other name would you have for a tortoise? Come on, of course, this is Tony the tortoise. Tony the tortoise. What? What? You don't know Tony? Tony's a good guy. Tony can tuck. Tony's got a little bowler hat. Tony's got his little tongue out. He's a, You know how Tony is. Tony's a silly dude. He's a silly dude with a, with a fuzzy bowler hat. it has got a lot of cat fur on it. Yeah, you get what I'm saying, Jimbo. Oh, how cute is this tortoise? Head comes out. Beautiful. Hello. We're going to add Tony to the background. Tony definitely tap dances. Tony the tortoise? Tony the tortoise totally tap dances. That's cute. Um, okay. All right, yeah, make sure to like this video. If this gets 150 likes before the next live stream, we'll do a giveaway next live stream. Next live stream, next Thursday, 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. We're gonna do a design along. We're gonna make something brand new. It's gonna have flowers. It's gonna be for Mama's Day. And yes, I am still live for a second longer river, but I'm leaving right now. Guys, thank you again for joining. I'm gonna tuck his little body in there. Thank you so much again for joining. Uh, thank you for the challenge and uh, the suggestions. Thank you for keeping Jimbo company. Okay, okay, we're gonna turn it off, chill. Love you guys, thanks for joining. Pasta la pizza, happy hooking, and oh my gosh, no, you hang up, stop. You're gonna make me flush. Storp near your hunger, burger, 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 Say bye. Say bye, Jimbo. Bye. 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 Your turn. Your turn. Hey, your turn. Don't bite the cord. Don't bite the cord. Don't bite that cord either. No, cords are not for biting. Okay, bye. No, you hang up. Oh my gosh, go bye.